as Jose White awaits the kick back at his own 25-yard line. Beautiful high spiraling kick. White will run under it and make the catch and has running room across the 40. Still running room in Trojan territory. Finally brought down near the 42-yard line. Excellent return by Jose White. Got the uh, one step he needed, broke a tackle, and White explosive speed. I saw this kid play high school ball, and he's an exciting player again, given that that one uh, glimpse or glimmer of an opening, and uh, he will go. Broke one, then two, and uh, there he goes. Opening kickoff, of course, his own man got in the way. He might have taken it uh, deeper, if not all the way. Broke that went out to about the 41-yard line. That time, a 37-yard return. By Jose White getting a well-deserved breather as David Reeves brings the Mountaineers back to the line of scrimmage. They start off for the second time in their three series with great field position, but thus far, Troy State's defense has been up to the challenge. Single back set behind Reeves. That's Razak, and they'll go with the option. Razak loses the football and just dribbled it out of bounds. Good break for the Mountaineers as Reeves really more known as a passer. Jeremiah the better of the option quarterbacks, but as we said before, injured in the first half or early second half, I guess, of the uh, victory against Wake Forest. Reeves came on, had an excellent ball game, but they will still go with the option when they get the opportunity. Sure, and Jerry Moore says that he likes and will uh, expect Reeves to be able to handle the option and that he can, and Jeremiah also can handle the passing game. So there's enough of a balance, but yes, if you're looking for probably the better thrower, it is Reeves. Dribbled his way for a three-yard pickup. Right. No, no traveling and no uh, no palming the ball. They like their basketball up here <laughs> as well. Reeves with time. That's Wilcox. He is going to be shy of the first down mark as half the city of Troy climbs on top of him there. That's the young man we told you about briefly in the pregame. He came here as a wide receiver. They had because they had so much talent last year at the tight end position. But he's a guy very versatile at 6'2", 225. They can play him at the tight end. And also what causes so much problems for a defense, you drop him off to a split end, put him in the slot, and he's tough for a linebacker. Yeah. And Troy Albee, a wide receiver, you'll see a bunch tonight, was a running back because they built so much depth at that position. They've moved him to a wide receiver, so they've really had some of those good problems. Third and three, big possession here for Appalachian State, trailing 7-0. Reeves from the gun, unloads it, nobody there. Colbert went untouched coming from the outside and it didn't look like they were setting up a screen of any kind. Reeves had to get rid of it in a hurry. He did and it's unfortunate for Appalachian because they had a pair of receivers streaking down the sideline. One of which I believe was Joey Gibson the flanker. He had an easy six if he could have held the ball for a split second longer but he really couldn't and Appalachian apparently is going to go for it on fourth and three. Certainly four down territory, and again, the kicking game uh, not too experienced, and this is uh, this is the kind of game you want to strike uh, back quickly against a team like Troy that's so potent and already has the lead. I told you McKinney pinned Wake Forest inside their own 23 times, but you don't gain much here. They'll throw it. They've got it for a first down. That's Wilcox again. You had Colbert trying to cover him there. That's a linebacker for Troy State, number nine, who had a big hit earlier, but tough man to cover in Wilcox. And it's just simply uh, running to first down uh, territory, turning around, and the ball was uh, delivered. They uh, they brought some help up there. They've been staying in man-to-man -man pretty much with their coverage, but they're, uh, they've got enough quickness in their secondary. They'll help each other out, but that time Wilcox able to get underneath. So the Mountaineers move the chains. First and 10 from the Troy 27-yard line. Razak looking for running room, finding none. He will be stopped shy of the 25. Gain of maybe a yard and a half. What an interesting story, Kareem Razak. He's a 5'11", 205, but he's got an incredible work ethic. And he came here simply as a walk-on after uh, starting his college career at another Southern Conference school, Wofford College. But that didn't work out for him. He came to Appalachian and last year virtually came out of nowhere. Not many folks around the Southern Conference knew anything about him. Rushed for uh, just under 1,000 yards at 991, and now his uh, brother, who's a linebacker, has joined him on the uh, roster. Pretty good duo in that backfield with Razak and Kornatzer. This time they'll go to the air. They've got a man inside the 10, at the 5, diving, touchdown. That's Wilcox, and Appalachian has pulled the a point of Troy State.
66-yard touchdown play from the arm of David Reeves. The catch by Wilcox, shaking a defender at the 10 and scooting into the end zone. Appalachian looking for the extra point from Mark Wright, a senior from Lakeland, Florida, trying to tie the game from the hold of Joey Gibson. Snap by Wes Allen is good. Hold is good. Kick is good as well. We're not at seven. What'd you expect? Two top five teams in one double A football squaring off in Boone, North Carolina. Got a good one. Not at seven right here on CSS. Along with Pete Yanity, Chris Stewart back with you at Kid Brewer Stadium. They call it the Rock. And we welcome you to the Rock here in the Appalachian Mountains, Appalachian State University, tied with Troy State at seven apiece. The scoring starting on a 31-yard touchdown run by Troy's DeMontre Carter. The extra point by Lawrence Tynes was good. Appalachian State able to tie it on the scoring drive. You see on your screen there, six plays, 42 yards, just over two minutes as Daniel Wilcox catches the 26-yard pass. Actually, about a 16-yard pass. He did the rest himself after catching the ball from Daniel Reeves. Excuse me, David Reeves, quarterback for Appalachian. Troy State in his first series scored lightning quick in three plays. The 31-yard uh, run preceded by a long uh, pass. Appalachian struggled early, but now has uh, got this game tied. That's Devontre Carter, who caught it a yard deep, ran right into his own man at the 15-yard line. That was the hardest hit on the play. <laughs> He ran right into Laquadius Justice, a 5'10", 232-yard fullback. <laughs> and look at it again. Demontre says, you know, I'm thinking I might pick up some big yardage. And here comes big Laquadius yep. all of a sudden. And he suddenly knows what linebackers feel like. Laquadius, <laughs> <laughs> a fullback by trade. There was a flag, but they've now waved it off. And an injured Troy State player. That is Donna Young, a 5'9", 192-pound sophomore from Quincy, Florida's Shanks High School. See it so often. Bodies flying in on special teams, on returns, and guys getting banged up a little bit. There was a flag, and as you mentioned, Pete, waved off. You had a block it or a hit in the back, but a player was knocked into Another one. the defender. Yeah. What a matchup tonight. Uh, Troy State coming in number two in one double-A. Appalachian State's number four. Troy plays in the Southland Football League. Appalachian out of the Southern Conference. They'll put Justice at a fullback. And at tailback now, LeBaron Black. Seven carries, just 16 yards one week ago. They've got about three or four guys that they'll rotate in for Troy. Nutter, the handoff, and not much running there at all. That was LeBaron Black, but he ran into several black jerseys as he got to the 20-yard line. The linebacking core is a good one for Appalachian. Two of the three actually were defensive backs when they came to college. Westland Hunter, number 11 that time, fights off the block and holds his ground and then simply stops him in his tracks. Uh, they have uh, certainly made some adjustments since that opening series when Troy went right down on the field on them, and uh, the linebackers certainly have been a little peppier over the past few plays. The man you see on your screen, the first one there, Hunter. Sam Small is also coming over. Linebacker making the stop after a gain of about a foot for LeBaron Black to go with the eye set with a pair of wideouts. Nutter looking to throw. And he's got the big fullback, Laquadius Justice, rumbling his way across the 40 to the 41 yard line. Second time we've seen Troy go to the fullback out of the backfield and pick up big yardage. They went to Buton earlier that time. It's Laquadius Justice. Part of the uh, additions to their passing package they uh, have this year, and that time just a little uh, safety dump off. Brock Nutter, the junior quarterback, has uh, excellent experience, and he's a guy who passed for nearly 2,000 yards a year ago, and he knows how to handle things when the pocket breaks down. Nutter a decent week. Last week, 13 of 25, 179 yards, and a pair of touchdowns as Justice had three carries for eight yards one week ago. They'll give it to the deep man. That is Black, and again, he is met just as he gets to the line of scrimmage. May have lost a yard on the play. They'll spot it just on the Troy side of the 40. Demontre Carter saw plenty of action on the uh, first few series. I don't believe we've seen him out there this time uh, following that, that kickoff return. Troy State's offense, they like to try to run it uh, first. Jerry Moore, the Appalachian says, uh, coach, says their offense reminds him a lot of his offense, although Appalachian will spread things out more. There's Carter on the bench with his helmet off, so maybe he's sitting out this series, and Black is a guy that will get plenty of touches, too. 
After a loss of a yard, second and 11. Nutter. Finding a man. Nice catch. Good coverage there, but still the beautiful catch made for Troy State. Pick up by Chad Lucas. He's a 6'2", 175-pound freshman from Booker T. Washington in Tuskegee, Alabama, and Nutter laying that one out perfect. With an All-American potential NFL player on the other side of cornerback for Appalachian, number 24, Corey Hall. They're going to work on uh, Deshaun Martin. They already uh, beat him on a long pass, but he's really played well since that opening series. I don't know what more he could have done there outside yeah. of committing pass yeah, interference. Exactly. Just, all, a, yeah, right just on great throw and catch. The hookup to Chad Lucas, but it's still third and a long yard for Troy. They have to get into Appalachian territory. They'll give it to the deep man. This time, Black able to battle his way. Kept the legs churning and made it all the way to the 47-yard line of the Mountaineers. That is a nice, hard run there by LeBaron Black, the 5'10", 205-pound sophomore from Springfield, Florida, and obviously the left side of that offensive front gave him a lot of help. He was Troy's top uh, returning rusher coming into this season, but none of their backs last year had really impressive rushing numbers. They had several between 300 and 700 yards, but again, he is a power kind of tailback, which is what their running game was until Carter transferred in and became eligible immediately moving in from Division 1A Auburn. On the toss sweep, Black again, nothing there. Great pursuit by Appalachian. We talked about him in pass coverage, but Deshaun Martin covering the run nicely there. The cornerback coming up to make the first hit. It was a defensive lineman, KT Stovall and uh, Martin, and then others uh, making their move and holding the ground. Watch, uh, real good work to, to kind of force the action there by, uh, by Deshaun uh, Martin. And then that set uh, things up. Uh, and a, a great run cover guy is uh, Remy uh, Abalowo. The uh, safety came on up from the strong safety slot. And that's what we'll do with him a lot. He's built like a linebacker, and he plays the run real well. So second and ten after no gain on the play. May have even lost a foot. The three wide outs in formation. Clock ticking near the 2.30 mark. A little quick out. And picking up two, three yards at the most. Troy State's Jonathan Tomlin. Another tight end. They will spread the wealth. Last week, Nutter hit seven different receivers in that game against Alabama A&M, and he is approaching that number already tonight. And that was a great example of what you do when you've got your power running look in there, and Appalachian can kind of play to that. You keep Monish, you throw it out to the flat. And then now in the very next play, in comes Carter, the speedster. Uh, but actually, they're not going to put him uh, in the backfield. It looks like they're opening things up this time with their formation. You saw the total yardage dominated by Troy thus far, but they need eight right now if they want to keep this drive alive. Yard to make. About the 36 for Appalachian. From the gun, he'll float it out there, and Nutter just throwing that one away. There you see a heady play. There was nothing there, no need to make a mistake, and perhaps give the ball to Appalachian for the third time in great field position. Instead, they'll call on their punter, Matt Allen, to try and pin the Mountaineers deep. That yeah, looked like a screen. Jamie Lover and big defensive lineman, all uh, Southern Conference caliber player for Appalachian, uh, making the uh, the pressure that time, but really didn't overcommit, and as a result, uh, Nutter really didn't execute the screen probably the way he wanted to. Joey Gibson awaiting the kick near his own 10-yard line. Allen, we told you, a preseason all-conference selection. Little pooch punt here, trying to pin the Mountaineers deep. They'll fill that one right at the 10. So, a good kick from the foot of Matt Allen. And Appalachian will start off first and 10 from their own 10 yard line. By far the worst field position they've had. They've had four series, one starting at the 20, the other two beyond the 40 yard line, and this one from right at their own 10. I'm anxious to see what Troy State does now about uh, the tight end uh, slash wide receiver uh, Wilcox, who really beat him on a couple of plays, including that touchdown on the last series. Got a full day of college football for you on CSS next Saturday. The day kicks off at noon Eastern, Miami of Ohio at 16th ranked Ohio State. At 3.30, it's a fierce interstate rivalry. Iowa State taking on Iowa at 7. We begin our Gulf South Conference Game of the Week series, Valdosta State at Southern Arkansas. After the first down carry, we also will remind you at 10 p.m. next Saturday, it's a tape delayed broadcast of ninth-ranked Virginia Tech hosting Rutgers in a Big East conference battle. That's four big football games next Saturday right here on CSS, your source for sports in the Southeast. Gain of a couple for the Mountaineers. You want to be very careful right here in this end of the field. A lot of bad things that can happen. Troy State recovering a 
fumble by Alabama A&M one week ago for a touchdown in the end zone. So that's an aggressive defense here, maybe a little too aggressive as Jose White scoots across the 15 near the 20. And about a yard shy, perhaps, of that first down mark. But what a difference there is in a third and long in that territory and second and about a yard. Yeah, White is so quick and uh, slashes a lot like DeMontre Carter does for Troy State. And he is a, a, a talented guy. Razak uh, gives you some good speed out of the backfield for Appalachia and some, some toughness inside. So they've got quite a one-two punch. They've got a junior college transfer named Jimmy Watkins, and he uh, may have as much talent as the other two. He's just going to have to work in there for some playing time. They'll go with a power look. The eye set behind the quarterback, Reeves. A go with the option. Almost lost his footing, and that impeded the progress of that play. He was close to the mark, but I don't know if he got there. Looks like he had to get to just past the 20, and we'll, it'll be all up to the spot. David Reeves, the senior from Valrico, Florida. Spring Valley, South Carolina, actually where he played his prep football. And his dad was an assistant at Florida and then moved while he was in high school to join the staff at South Carolina. He was there for a while. Then he moved from South Carolina to Cornell, so from the SEC to the Ivy League for his dad. Jerry Moore's club picking up the first down just enough, maybe by the nose of the football for the first down mark for Reeves. As we said earlier, not known as the best rushing quarterback on this team, but as we saw there, not bad with the wheels, just not as gifted perhaps as Jeremiah, but what he lacks with a ground game, he certainly makes up through the air. We knew we had a good football game. The first 15 minutes have not disappointed us. 7-7 our score. So glad you're with us here on CSS as we're tied in Boone, North Carolina. The pioneer and a trendsetter. Larry Blaney taking his second rank Troy State Trojans to the mountains of North Carolina. Boone to be precise. Taking on the number four team in America, the Appalachian State Mountaineers. Jerry Moore's club, 1-0 after a tremendous win. Their second time in three years to knock off Wake Forest. As we take a look at the numbers from the first half of play, Troy a little bit better go of it offensively, but where it matters most on the scoreboard, where even at a big reason those total yardage numbers are so different. Plays. Yeah, it really did. A couple of big plays, but also Appalachian started with two very good uh, field position on two very uh, good situations mm -hmm. for them sure. across the 40-yard line, so they didn't have as much yardage to cover on their scoring play. They'll send Hayward to the top of your screen, the wide out. That is Wilcox in motion. I set behind Reeves. They give it to the deep man. That is Jose White. He's got some running room across the way. And throws it back for some reason. Looked like he was trying to lateral that football back to a teammate. Almost disaster for Appalachian, but very fortunate. He stepped on the sideline before he let go of the football. Not a smart move, and not a smart move, especially when you're in front of your own bench and your <laughs> head coach is just a few feet away. Let's see, maybe this angle will show us. He might have just lost it as he was falling down already out of bounds. Well, yeah, he got right. knocked away. He okay. yeah. uh, uh, the angle certainly, uh, certainly <laughs> helped. It was swatted. He'd already stepped out of bounds. I couldn't imagine him yeah. trying to lateral that ball, but from our angle, yeah. that's what it initially looked yeah, like. But did. a great job by our camera crew to show you that the ball was just stripped away. Yep. So a first down pickup for Appalachian, 14 yards on the run. They'll go with a play action. That's a lateral, and Alby trying to find some running room. Pretty good pursuit by Troy. They just kept that one strung out a little bit as he picked up two, maybe three on the play. It'll be second and around seven. Albie has great speed. He was a running back. Uh, they decided to move him to wide receiver because they built up so well at the uh, that position. With uh, Troy State, what you have is a very quick secondary, and even though they sent Albie in motion that time to set him up, it, uh, they didn't miss a beat in the Troy State secondary. Troy Albee last week, four catches, 19 yards, and he, again, another senior from Lincolnton, Georgia, played at Georgia Military Academy. And they will go with five wideouts in formation, a triple stack to the far side of your screen. Reeves from the gun. Flinging it out there to Razak, who is pushed out of bounds. McLean in coverage there, the weak side linebacker. But again, very close to the chains. I think he'll be about a yard or two shy, bringing up another third down situation for Appalachian. They took three of the quick defensive backs for Troy, made them uh, worry about uh, 
the action on one side of the field with the stack three wide receivers, or at least two of the quick defensive backs, and they, they tried going the other way with it. Appalachian State, one of four thus far in third down situations. Again, last week, they converted on an incredible 58% of their third down opportunities as Reeves brings them to the line of scrimmage. Single setback, that's Razak again with three wideouts once more in formation. The short drop across the middle and threw into heavy coverage, and now the flag will come in. They're going to flag the free safety, Travis Bozeman, a 5'10", 178-pound sophomore from Wetumpka. I think Pete, we're going to see him knock the ball away cleanly with one hand, but perhaps grab the intended receiver with the other. Yeah, he got uh, there a little right. Ride him a little bit. They, they went in the air together, but uh, you just can't uh, make that kind of contact. And he actually tripped him up a little bit. It didn't, uh, you, you wondered why he was throwing into such traffic at first, but now you see why. Uh, uh, Slade was not where he needed to be. It's not as subtle as I initially thought, <laughs> but he got there and made the contact with Rashad Slade. This player that technically, I guess, caught the game winner against Wake Forest. Touchdown that was the final score of the game for Appalachian. Wake later scored, but could not score another time in order to overcome the deficit. Well, in Appalachian, certainly, uh, and in the Jerry Moore era, they've held their own against uh, Wake Forest. They've won three of the last four, and that uh, game of the night was, you might even call it a dominant performance. They held Wake to 55 yards on the ground, 180 yards total for the game, and 80 of those yards came on a late scoring drive that just made the score respectable from Wake's standpoint. So it was quite an effort by that Appalachian D, and the offense uh, controlled things. They racked up over 300 yards. Held the ball for 38 minutes yeah. in that game as well. First and 10 from the Troy 44-yard line. May have been movement. They will flag this one before the play begins, even though they quick hook up to Gibson. Looked like it was going to go. The whistle came well before the snap. Robert Rougeau sorting things out. Like it may have been Murphy, the tight end that moved. With these two teams we have on the field tonight, obviously they're each expecting big things in their league. Troy State's the favorite in the Southland Football League. Appalachian would be favored probably in any other league in the country, but uh, they're one of uh, three heavyweights in the Southern Conference. Look at the left side of the line, top of your screen, and uh, jumping offside on that play, so they'll back it up five yards. But Appalachian has to compete with Georgia Southern, which is number one in the top ten this week, and Furman, which is number nine in the Southern Conference, so it's a top-heavy league, to say the least. Across the middle, he's got his receiver. That's Slade. That's the man he was looking for earlier. This time, they don't knock him to the turf before the ball gets there, and Slade able to pick up another first down. Appalachian's offense a little slow to get going early, but now starting to pick things up. Trying to see if they go with a zone this time. Looked like Slade was able to get right in underneath. He actually, uh, he beat a linebacker, so they had to respect him. This time again, look at Slade. Hey, don't hit the uh, the official. You don't want to do that if you're Reeves. And Slade able to uh, to get past uh, the uh, the linebacker in coverage, uh, Nazir Yamini. And Yamini's playing in the middle because of an injury on that defense. He's usually an outside guy. The toss to White. Picks up some nice yardage, actually four, maybe five on the play to the 25 of Troy State. Jerry Moore, one of several great coaches that have come through Boone, North Carolina. Kid Brewer, I guess, started the tradition back in the 1930s. He won 83% of his games over four years. Also had Mac Brown, currently the head coach at Texas that has come through here. Sparky Woods moved from Appalachian later in the SEC or to South, South Carolina. Carolina. He was there when the transition happened. A number of great assistants we'll tell you about in a moment as well as they give it to the first man through. Quick hitter to the fullback. Haven't seen that prior to that handoff to Appalachian's Jerry Beard, Jerry six Beard. feet, 200 pound junior from Lincolnton, North Carolina. We'll talk about the assistants, not bad either. Fisher to Barry, of course, for several years, head coach at Air Force. He spent nine years at Appalachian as an assistant. Ellis Johnson, now the defensive coordinator at Alabama, was an assistant coach here along with Ron Cooper, formerly at Louisville, and now the head coach at Alabama A&M, the team Troy defeated a week ago. And also Don Kirkpatrick spent seven years as an assistant. He is now the head coach at Chattanooga. We saw him Thursday night here on CSS. His mocks gave UAB all they wanted in Birmingham. 
Big third down play. Reeves to the near side and a big hit level by Nick Colbert. Just as he caught the football, Jerry Beard driven to the turf. Nice catch by Beard, but I don't believe it's going to be enough for the first down. Now you live for this if you're a linebacker. Colbert, speed, strength, and right there. That was the best option. They were trying to get the uh, first down yardage, so it wasn't necessary, necessary to go deep, uh, but Colbert all over the play. Mark Wright on to attempt the field goal from 40 yards out. Spot right at the, or the hold actually, right at the 30 by Joey Gibson. Wes Allen the snap. First two ends were good. Third, good as well. First field goal of the year by Mark Wright, and it is good from 40 yards out. And for the first time this evening, Appalachian has a lead, 10-7 over Troy Steak. Got a good one going right here on CSS. Handshakes all around for Mark Wright. His 40-yard field goal has given Appalachian a 10-7 lead you see on your scoreboard. Along with Pete Yannity, I'm Chris Stewart. So glad you're with us here for live college football action on CSS. Two of the top teams in America. And say without reservation, without regard to classification, they may be labeled one double A, but these are two tremendous programs in Troy State and Appalachian. Of course, as we've said already several times a week ago, Appalachian knocking off Wake Forest last year. Troy State went to Nippert Stadium and defeated Cincinnati one week prior to the Bearcats' upset victory against the Wisconsin Badgers. So these two teams, when they're on their game, can play with just about anybody. Bit of a mix-up, but Jonathan Carter fields it across the 20. He is corralled as he nears the 28-yard line, but a nice return for the Trojans. As we take a look at the scoring drive for Appalachian, 11 plays, 67 yards, five and a half minutes. Capped by the 40-yard kick by Wright. That's got to be a huge confidence boost for him. Major indeed. And again, we noted earlier that uh, when you've got a guy who didn't even attempt a field goal in what was his first opportunity as a college kicker last week, to nail that one, that could be uh, important later in the game if they go to him in a pressure situation. Brock Nutter trying to bring Troy State back. They are behind for the first time this evening. They started the scoring on their first offensive series, a drive that covered about 79 yards and only three plays. Looking. He is brought down. Football is loose, but a good break for Troy as that one rolls out of bounds near the 25. A loss of four on the play, but not a loss of possession. That would have been disastrous for Troy with momentum, obviously, now in Appalachian's favor. Big number 93, KT Stovall. We've seen him moving around the field tonight. Watch him come from the blind side. That's why the left tackle is so important. Well, that time he uh, easily gets by Stan Currington and nails Brock Nutter. Moves around his man. Actually, it was uh, Johnny Maddox who he beat on the play. And uh, Stovall making the big hit. Redshirt freshman is Stovall out of Fayetteville, North Carolina. Played at Pine Forest High School. This is a physical Appalachian State defense, and they became more physical uh, after last season. Uh, they weren't happy with what they did defensively in the second half of the year. When they had success, made the playoffs. They changed things around quite a bit. Second and 16 for the Trojans. They'll give it to the deep man. That's Devontae Carter. He had the 31-yard touchdown run earlier for Troy, but not quite as successful there. Decent pickup, but it still will bring up third and long for TSU. Carter's one of 13 Division I transfers on the Troy State roster. Most of those guys are from 1A. They've been able to go from the 1A ranks, immediately come to Troy and play. That's going to change because next year, Troy begins its move to Division 1A. But it certainly helped him get some uh, some big-time talent that's available immediately. And it's also added, allowed him to build a little bit of depth for that uh, first year in the, uh, the the next level. They are jumping in with both feet to that 1A level. We'll talk with our oh, yeah. director Troy, uh, from Troy State, Johnny Williams, at the half about that. Third and 10. They've got to get to their own 39. Nutter trying to buy some time will throw it underneath and throws it out of bounds. He was trying to hook up with Hayward Skipper, the sophomore from Baxley, Georgia, who had a 59-yard touchdown reception a week ago, but that one thrown out of bounds as Nutter having problems finding time and also having problems finding the mark. And look for Jimmy Freeman, number 40, lined up outside, then uh, stunned, came right up the uh, the middle, and he moved Nutter out of the pocket. Nutter's more of a classic drop-back passing guy. They don't like to move the pocket with him, so when you get him on the run, it, uh, it's to his disadvantage. 
Freeman sent him scurrying initially, and then the tackle on that side, Jason Sowell also giving chase. You see Matt Allen, the punter. Spiraling kick, a good one. White will field it there with his 25. Needs to beat a man, and he can't do it. Tried to drag Jabbar Dunbar, the senior from Thomasville, Georgia, a few yards, but still good field position for Appalachian. He started once from their 20, once from their 10. Everything else has been beyond the 30-yard line, so they have to be very pleased with that and also pleased with the look of the scoreboard right now. 10-7, Mountaineers on top of Troy State with 9.28 to go in the first half. Jerry Moore's club found themselves behind very quickly, 7-0, but very calm and patient. Taking the lead over that man's club, Larry Blady. We mentioned the coaching history from Appalachian a little bit earlier. Some familiar names have come through Troy as well. People like Chan Gailey, of course, former head coach of the Dallas Cowboys as Albee takes it on the misdirection play and a great job defensively by Troy just to string that one out. Troy Red. Albee brought down across the way. Read beautifully by Antonio Thompson, the strong safety, playing the run and making the hits. That is his strength, and that time he simply read what was going on, uh, was never fooled, and was uh, there to greet Albee as he came around the corner. Talked about Gailey. He won a Division II national championship at Troy. Spent a couple of years there before moving on. Also, Rick Rhodes, who now a high school coach in Pelham, Alabama, spent three years there, also claimed a Division II national title. Reeves with plenty of time and a beautiful throw and catch made there. Reed in coverage for Troy, but not until Albee makes the catch across the 45. That's going to be enough for a first down, I do believe. Came underneath the coverage that time. Reed was close by, but uh, working under that zone, and that's, uh, that's one of Albee's specialties. He's got that good running back quickness, and that time looped back around. Uh, Troy State uh, with the Division II, uh, two Division II national titles under their belts. They're trying to become just a second school to do something quite unique. Montana State's the only school to win a national championship at three levels, NAIA, Division II, and if uh, Troy State can do it in their last year of 1AA this season, they will join that very elite category. They've had enough talent, as has Appalachian State, to, to win that crown, but just haven't been able to, to get all the way to that national title game as the first down carry takes Appalachian into Troy territory at about the 47 of the Trojans as we'll look at it again following the run by Appalachian's Jimmy Watkins. He's the junior college transfer. They affect some big things out of. Gives them a third dimension at uh, the tailback uh, slot. And they actually think they're four deep uh, in that backfield uh, with the, the primary rusher. But uh, Watkins, junior college guy, they think he might even have some uh, NFL talent. But uh, when he got here, he knew he had to compete with uh, Kareem Razak and Jose White. Second and four upcoming. They will give it to the deep man. That is Watkins again. He will be about two yards shy of the first down mark. So another third down conversion opportunity upcoming. While Troy's getting Mountaineers. ready to make the jump to 1A, yeah, Appalachian has, has run their program like a 1A program. And the talent they've uh, been able to develop here, sent it on to the NFL. One of their recent big names, Dexter Copley, a linebacker who uh, had a fine career here and is now at the next level. But Appalachian has uh, three or four guys that they are confident will be playing on Sunday. They've got a great program that's in a tremendous football league, and it's a great fit geographically. Something that Troy struggles with a bit as you see the third down conversions thus far. They'll go to the air on third and second. They'll go deep. That is Wilcox. He's got the first down and more inside the Troy 20 yard line to the 16. Another beautiful hookup from David Reeves to Daniel Wilcox. Hadn't seen much of Wilcox since that uh, touchdown scoring drive by Appalachian back in the first quarter. This time it looks like he uh, runs a slant out and there he goes beating his man and he was able to uh, move past Thompson. Again, Thompson is a, a fine uh, safety from a uh, run cover and hitting standpoint, but covering the pass, if he has a weakness, that's it. And they exploit it that time with Wilcox. Boy, he got just enough, too, to bring Wilcox down. Wilcox was trying to put on the brakes and was ready to scoot into the end zone, but able to get just enough of him there was Antonio Thompson. First and 10 from the 16. Watkins shaking free from one man, could not get loose from another one. Vernon Marble, big defensive lineman, 6'2", 260 from Ashland, Alabama's Clay County High School, making the stop. 
But again, the Mountaineers picking up nice yardage on first down and find themselves in the red zone with a clock ticking under six minutes to go before intermission. Doing what they did against Wake. They're missing, mixing the pass with the run. And, and as somewhat importantly, they're keeping the clock going. Pretty much their passing game has been toward the middle of the field. And let's face it, uh, Troy State's potent enough on offense. It's not a bad thing to keep the ball out of their hands if you're Appalachian. Second and four from the 10. Looking, throwing, and it's incomplete. Reeves trying to connect that time with Joey Gibson. A little bit out of his reach. Let me ask you, Pete, is this an area where perhaps they miss Jeremiah? Because you generally prefer to run in this situation. The guy that runs that option a little bit better than David Reeves probably would love to have that option right now. And with the depth they've built in their backfield, too. And yeah, another guy not to forget about is Neil Kornatzer, who led them last year with 12 touchdowns. He's their fullback. And uh, Daniel Jeremiah, he's actually probably going to be out uh, of game action for another couple of weeks. He hurt his knee, but they, they think he may be able to begin jogging by Monday. But they don't expect him to be out any more than uh, another three weeks at the most. Third and four. Will Cox just dropped it. Had it. Was not going to be at the first down mark, but had some momentum that may have allowed him to run past Jimmy McClain, the linebacker who was there in coverage. But one of the few times you'll see Daniel Wilcox just flat out drop in. One of those footsteps kind of plays. Uh, he was thinking about uh, what he what he had to go against or how he might get popped, it looks like. Or maybe he was just thinking about turning it toward the end zone before he got his hands on it. So for the second time tonight, Mark Wright called on to attempt a field goal. He made a 40-yarder earlier. That gave Appalachian their current 10-7 lead. He'll try to build on it. 27-yard attempt here. Snap and hold are good. Kick is up. This one is good as well. He's two for two. Mark Wright got an extra week to make before he made his debut, but it has been a successful one for Appalachian State. They lead Troy 13 to 7. Glad you're with us here on CSS, your source for sports in the Southeast. Well, we talked about Troy State's tremendous kicking game in, during the pregame, but Jerry Moore's Special teams have been pretty good as well. When you take a look at the returns they've had from Jose White, you take a look at the two big field goals that have already been made from Brian Wright in this game, 40 and 27 yards officially, and also a decent punting effort thus far from Nathan McKinney. He has to be pretty pleased. I know he likes the score, 13-7, nine plays, 55 yards, right at four minutes with the 27-yarder from Wright giving the Mountaineers their current 13-7 advantage over the number two team in Wonderboy football, Troy State University. Number four, Appalachian kicking off. It will be Demontre of the two Carters fielding it inside the three. Running room across the 25, barreling his way to the 30-yard line. He's a little fellow with great speed, but not afraid to lower his shoulder and try to run over some people. You see why he played as a true freshman at Auburn. Demontre Carter sizzling his speed. Don't forget about our upcoming broadcast here on CSS tomorrow. The Outdoor Advantage followed by Fishing Southern Style. Then we got some college football. Louisiana Tech at Penn State and then inside Winston Cup Racing. Auto Week, Bike Week, South Carolina State at Savannah State. Another busy broadcast schedule here on CSS. First and 10 for Troy from their 35. Nutter hit as he throws, and they will try that an incomplete pass as he was leveled on the play. Jimmy Freeman coming from his defensive end position. And I don't know that Brock Nutter ever saw him. Well, there he was again. He has become a real pain for Nutter. And Freeman, you know, they list him as a defensive end, kind of with a 4-3 look, but he plays a lot like a uh, linebacker, six feet. 245, and he is uh, an imposing, uh, imposing despite his lack of uh, overwhelming size. After a quick start, Troy State offensively has been very sluggish. Pitch it to Carter, and that is just a great job defensively by Westland Hunter, the linebacker that caused all the problems there. He had several black hats there, but it was Hunter that forced Carter to change direction and run right into the pursuit of. Appalachian's defense. When you've got uh, three linebackers who all have experience as defensive backs, you expect guys that can run. That's just what Appalachian has. They can 
they can force the uh, quick as a tailbacks to have to change stride. That's what they do that time. And also give some credit, some, uh, a nice job to kind of uh, force things uh, back in uh, that time uh, for Appalachian State. That was Josh Jeffries. Yeah, he was Josh taking Jeffries. on taking on two blockers at that time. Third down and 11. Troy looking for some offense. They need to get across their own 45. Inside handoff. Nice call as they go to LeBaron Black, but not much there either. Good job of staying home by Appalachian defensively. Stovall among the Mountaineers there to make the stop. And again, first three plays of the game, pretty impressive for Troy State. They scored on their first series, but from that point on, Appalachian has just shut them down. They've taken away the threat of Jonathan Carter. We're going to look at that uh, next time Appalachian goes on defense. Uh, it looked like he might uh, be off to the races in this AstroTurf tonight after the opening series when he caught a bomb of better than 50 yards. But he has been relatively quiet since then. Lawrence Tynes on to punt for the third time. Matt Allen, excuse me, beautiful kick that will bounce inside the 10, take an Appalachian hop, and then will be down by Gordon Williams. Third punt of the night by Matt Allen. And does a good job of pinning Appalachian inside their 20 again. Our Monday lineup begins at 1 o'clock Eastern with a re-air of Thursday's Chattanooga at UAB game. The evening lineup kicks off with the Bobby Bowden Show at 6.30. At 8 o'clock, we'll have the re-air of today's Vanderbilt at Alabama game, and that'll be followed by the Tennessee Football Classics Show. Vintage Orange, that's at 11 o'clock. CSS, it's your source for sports in the Southeast. Appalachian with the lead, looking for more. We'll throw it out to Wilcox again. A busy evening for him as he makes the catch from Reeves and gets across the 20 to about the 21-yard line. That's the sixth catch of the night for Wilcox already. That'll put him over 70 yards receiving, also a touchdown. Slade and Albay were the guys uh, Troy State had to be thinking the most about coming in to the game. They're the two threats, but Reeves has done a nice job picking up uh, Wilcox, who's for the most part been uh, beating uh, linebackers. And he's uh, gotten it done here, especially uh, on a scoring drive in the first quarter of these past couple of series. They'll work from the shotgun and second and short. Reeves across the middle. Nice catch made there by Razak. Shows his great strength as he battles his way across the 32 to the 33-yard line. Razak a simple uh, down and in over the middle. And there he is dropping <clears throat> right in front of coverage. It was pretty good. He was in traffic and uh, applying uh, some uh, pressure right there, but uh, not before he caught the ball it was uh, Corey Sears. I don't know that they're hitting on all cylinders, but definitely a very strong effort from Appalachian offensively matching the play of the defense after the one-minute mark of this football game. Reeves again with plenty of time all day to find Gibson to the far side of the field. He is out of bounds right at the 40, stopping the clock with 2.20 left to play here in the first half. And they're going after the best that uh, Troy State has to offer. They threw it against uh, Thompson, the defensive back, in a long play last series. And Sears, their best linebacker, is coming off injury. And that time right underneath coverage. And uh, they, they continue to move the chains. David Reeves, very comfortable, as you might expect. A guy that has played quite a bit, a senior. 10 of 16 a week ago for 130 yards and leading apt to that victory. Throws it into heavy coverage that time. <laughs> First of all, Albee is fortunate to come out of that alive. Secondly, Appalachian fortunate that that one wasn't knocked around and perhaps picked off a dangerous pass across the middle, which sets up third down. Good pop by Jerry Bolton, the linebacker that time. Getting underneath uh, the coverage is what uh, they'll work on now because obviously they've become wise as Troy State to the fact that Appalachian can send Wilcox uh, on that slant and, uh, and so forth. Reeves, though, has that gun. He likes to air it out. Wilcox and Albee to the near side of your screen. Pair of wideouts to the opposite side. Reeves on third down, looking across the middle, overshoots Troy Albee, his intended receiver, near the 40-yard line, and that will set up the first punt in quite a while for Nathan McKinney. But you notice Reeves is getting some great protection, and that maybe has something to do with the fact that Appalachian State's offensive line outweighs Troy State's defensive front by about 20 pounds on average. 
McKinney set to punt for the third time. Two punts, 38 yards, his average thus far. Reeves and Albee just uh, had a, I don't want to say heated, but pretty close to that discussion of the sidelines. Uh, they're still not too happy with each other. As Albee kind of grabbed Reeves as he walked off the field. Apparently there was a miscommunication, and now it's uh, carried over to a bit of a face-to-face. -face. And a timeout called here as well by Troy. So some confusion in the special teams forcing Troy to use their first time out. And that's not the time you want to blow one when you're about to get the ball back with just 2.10 to go in the first half. Obviously, you'd love to have all those timeouts remaining in order to try to put together a, de a deliberate drive or at least as deliberate as you can with two minutes and 10 seconds to go in a half. With the, uh, the special teams last year, punting wasn't a problem for Appalachian in their kicking game. Uh, told left a little bit to be desired, uh, but uh, you know, punting, they did a great job. And also in, in punt coverage, uh, they beat Georgia Southern at the time, the number one team on this very field, uh, on the strength of a block punt that uh, went for a score. So the special teams and any kind of confusion from the punting standpoint really haven't been something that they've, uh, they've been accustomed to in recent times. Correct myself, McKinney, two punts, 42.5 yard average. Thus far, his third kick. Upcoming snap from Wes Allen. Wobbly kick that will be fielded by Reed across the 20. He's got some room if he can shake free, but he cannot get away. As Reed got across the 30 to about the 32-yard line, he is brought down on good pursuit by Appalachian. That was Samad Razak, the brother of uh, Kareem. Actually, the initial uh, pressuring is by Jonathan Lyles, and then uh, there's Samad coming in there. His brother's a running back. He's a linebacker, and uh, they go at it in practice, but they both say it's just good spirit and no, uh, you know, no brotherly vengeance there. Just a little smack. Yep. Samad's uh, quite an athlete. He played quarterback and on defense uh, as linebacker in the secondary in high school. Quarterback and linebacker is not a combination you hear very often. <laughs> Under two minutes to go, Nutter unloading it across the middle. Nice catch made there by Troy State's Hayward Skipper. Six foot, 182 pound sophomore from Baxley, Georgia's Appling County High School. And they'll tell you that Skipper is, is maybe their most dependable receiver. He's kind of the underneath guy and they use Carter uh, to go deep. But again, Carter's not done much and for the most part, uh, Deshaun Martin at the uh, uh, bottom of the screen there. Number nine's been the guy sticking on him. Second and a yard, but they'll go from the gun again with a clock ticking under a minute and a half to play before the break. Nutter throwing it out there. Good coverage again by Deshaun Martin, but they will say the catch was made by Jonathan Carter. Wow. And again, Martin right there, uh, you know, if he does any more, he gets the, uh, the flag for pass interference. Looks like Jonathan Carter maybe shaking up a bit. Crazy play. How does he hang on to the ball? And uh, maybe they're applying the old ground can't cause the fumble theory. Close. He was down, and I can't tell if he had possession, but the official was right there. We could probably see better from this camera angle as we slow it down. Again, Martin, a good job, did everything he could, and I'm glad I didn't have to make that call. And still down is Carter. Keep in mind, it is AstroTurf they're playing on, and you land like that, uh, maybe take more of a blow than if you're on uh, the natural surface. Chuck Ash, the head trainer for Troy State, the man attending to him. He is working now his 207th game of service for Troy State. In their media guide, of course, they list Dr. James Andrews of Birmingham as a, one of their medical staff. He has an association with the school. And he, of course, is every athlete's doctor exactly. these days. Yeah. If you're hurt, that's pretty much where you head is to Birmingham <laughs> to Hell South. Short drop from Nutter as Carter's apparently all right. They'll hit Black out of the backfield. He tries to find that first down mark, and more wisely, he finds that boundary to stop the clock at a minute That's 10 to go in the second quarter. Deshaun Martin on the stop. Martin's getting a lot of activity. That's the uh, that's the one negative when you've got an All-America at the other corner is that uh, you're the guy that gets picked on, and Martin is uh, doing a pretty good job of holding his own. Corey Hall's got to be lonely. He keeps uh, They line him up pretty much on the strong side. They're not necessarily putting him on the fastest guy, Jonathan Carter. And uh, Martin's getting the, the tougher task. 
Again, four wideouts in formation. They'll go across the middle pass thrown behind the intended receiver, Demontre Carter, who had moved from a tailback to a wideout slot. But I think he got a little bit of a head start. Flags are down. I think they're going to call him for a false start. That's the call. So we'll back them up five yards, second and six. But the time, perhaps the bigger factor right here, clock now down to a minute seven. What a huge momentum swing there. They're trying to gather here uh, in Appalachian territory. They at least want to come away uh, at some point. We'll stay with us at halftime. Alfred White, commissioner of the Southern Conference, will be joining us in the booth along with Johnny Williams, the athletic director at Troy State University. All the highlights, and there have been quite a few from this first half of play on both sides of the ball. Second and six upcoming for Troy as Nutter works from the gun once more. Across the middle again to Carter as they run a little clear out for him, but he is going to be close to the first down mark, close enough that they'll have to stop the clock at least to measure, if not signal first down. I think he's got it by about a foot. Under a minute, clock stopping momentarily with 49 seconds to go, as you see in the top portion of your screen. Trips like this one for Troy State uh, won't be happening in the future. They're not going to go on the road to too many 1AA foes because they're making that jump. And uh, this is a, uh, a program that has uh, done great things under that guy, Larry Blakeney, and his uh, decade of service at school, and now is getting ready to make that, uh, that huge step to 1A next year. Well, Troy calling a timeout. They will talk things over. That leaves them with just one timeout remaining with 49.8 seconds left to play in this half. Well, if you want to keep up with what's going on on CSS each day, then the place for you to go is the CSS website. It's at www.css-sports.com. You'll find our weekly schedule there as well as other information about our network, CSS. It's your source for sports in the southeast. Brock Nutter last season passed for 1,999 yards. I couldn't find one more yard to get. <laughs> you got to round up at that <laughs> point, don't you? It just sounds so much better to say a 2,000-yard passing season. Not a bad career. He's completed 57.4% of his passes. Started as a redshirt freshman. He's thrown for over 3,600 yards and, and 23 unlike, touchdowns as unlike well. Unlike Appalachian, he's really the man for Troy State, and but uh, whereas Appalachian from Jeremiah to Reeves doesn't have much of a drop-off, if any. Ryan Shirley is the backup. He has seen limited time, if any, and Nutter is brought down back near midfield, and they'll have to burn that final timeout with less than 43 seconds to go. We've called Jimmy Freeman's name a few times this half, haven't we? Well, he is, he is super quick, part of a, a quick front for Appalachian. Again, he does the uh, stunt outside and comes right up the uh, late inside. So I think at halftime, that's going to be a point of discussion on that offensive line. Tough guy to pick up, the, uh, the right tackle, doing the best thing uh, he can, Charles Thomas, by the time Freeman Cuts back in. Uh, Thomas doesn't have the speed to go get him. Freeman at six feet, 245, a senior from Crest High School, Shelby, North Carolina native. Three tackles doesn't really tell the story because how many how many times has he forced the action tonight? It's like it's Brent McAlilly. That's the left guard for Troy. 6'3", 308, and a senior. And he's a preseason All-American, a guy that not only is a huge part of this offensive front. He's also the long snapper for Troy. So you lose Brent McAlilly, you lose an awful lot for this football team, and hopefully he is not seriously injured. Good to see him hop up. Or as much as a guy 6'3", 308 is going to hop anyway. <laughs> McAlilly, uh, Blake Carruthers, Brent Harrison, Charles Thomas, four senior starters. And uh, you know if you watch this game, that experience combined with the size and the strength is so important. Let's see how he actually uh, how he actually got here. He's big number 79 he'd be on the left side. Oh, he got rolled up. By Freeman mm. on the sack. And fortunately, he is walking off the field. You see that, and you, you think worst-case scenario right away. But it looks like he's not walking with too much of a limp. Still smarting a bit. Maybe just something in the ankle, and maybe he'll be able to return. Boy, if he is, he is very fortunate because you see so many linemen 
have a season come to a close on a play just like that. Hopefully it won't be serious. Second down and a bunch for Troy. Nutter looking, buying time. He's got a man. He's open. He's got the first down. Inside the 25 and why is that getting out of bounds is the junior Daniel O'Brien, 6'2", 180 out of Spartanburg, South Carolina. Had one catch for nine yards a week ago. Looked like they just cleared out for him, Pete. O'Brien played at a high school, which has uh, since he left gone to a passing offense. Well, he missed the fun there, but he certainly has uh, opportunities here. One of the uh, forgotten guys in that receiving arsenal. But again, they're throwing the ball even more this year at Troy State. And looks like he's going to get some touches this season. And a heads-up play to find the boundary again. So many times it's just the nature of players that want to fight for an extra yard or two. But now you need seconds more than you need yards. 34 on the clock from the 23 across the middle. That's the man again, O'Brien, inside the five to about the three-yard line after not throwing to him the entire game. Back-to-back -back passes to O'Brien, but no timeouts left. They have to hurry. Of course, the clock stops in college football with the movement of the chains, but Troy hurrying to the line of scrimmage so they can stop the clock. Let's see if they go with the quick down of the football. They do. Nutter taking the snap and dropping it quickly. That will stop the clock with 27 seconds to go as we look at what put the Trojans in this type of position. Who is this man O'Brien, they've got to be wondering. <laughs> He's a junior college transfer from Middle Georgia, and again, originally from Spartanburg, South Carolina's Broome High School. And, you know, he's got the uh, the good size uh, and uh, lengthy guy and the good stride, so he's a big target, 6'2 and uh, 180. Remy Awalowo, the man that saved the touchdown. Now they'll go from the gun with the lone setback, LeBaron Black. Four wideouts in formation for Troy. No timeouts. Clock under 28 seconds to go before the break. Troy trailing by six. Nutter on the option. Will keep it himself. Dives for the goal line. He got in. Brock Nutter tying the score at 13 off. He's known as a passer, but he ran the option there to perfection. Black was covered on the play, just tucked it under and found the goal line, and we are knotted at 13. Looked like he had great experience uh, moving down the line and thinking about the dive, the pitcher, the keep. That time, Nutter shows you what uh, what it can do when you've, you've had a bunch of snaps. You've been in the fire quite a bit. Ran that a little bit in high school. Played for Gerald Gann at Hoover High School and a little bit of the option in the mix, but primarily a passer. Times trying to give Troy the lead. Kick is up. Kick is good. And Troy State has regained the advantage. 14 to 13 as we take a look at Brock Nutter again. He'd make his high school coach proud. <laughs> Would now, indeed. <laughs> a little bit unsure, but he had enough of uh, enough of a juke in there to keep Josh Jeffries uh, off step, and that's what uh, helped him get past him. A couple of touchdowns for Troy State. 31-yard touchdown run from Demontre Carter in the first moments of this contest. A couple of extra points from Lawrence Tynes after that one. And then the touchdown run we just saw there by Nutter giving Troy that 14 to 13 advantage. It figures in a game with so many big time players that guys maybe you don't expect like a, a Danny O'Brien or even maybe a Wilcox on the Appalachian side step up uh, big time. A nine play scoring drive for Troy, 68 yards, a minute 36 off the clock. It was capped by the three yard run by the quarterback, Brock Nutter. I don't think anybody's been disappointed, do you? So far, one point game as we approach to happen. Who knows, there's 23.8 uh, seconds left, so lots can happen. Keep in mind, he ran to the left side that time. I didn't get a chance to see but uh, Stan Currington, the big uh, left tackle, uh, if he was back in there, was not at 100%, but that's an important uh, fact that will get that done so close to the goal line in that situation. I'm trying to keep an eye out for McAlilly as well, the guard who had been rolled up McAlilly, earlier. McAlilly, it's McAlilly who was the left guard, yeah. I mean, I knew it was the left side, right. though, that uh, had, been, uh, had been hit a little bit. But key play in him. When you can put that in in the, in the first half, uh, you get down to the goal line again. That's something else for Appalachian to think about. They're not going to give Jose White the opportunity to have a big run back. They'll kick it short to Wilcox, but they forgot to cover him. Daniel Wilcox across the 45 before being forced out of bounds. And again, great field position for Appalachian State. They've got all three timeouts remaining and still 16 seconds left to play right. Their place kicker feeling good. He's two for two thus far on the evening. And Appalachian's got the uh, the ability to pass it downfield. They've shown it tonight. Jerry Moore is uh, not necessarily uh, the kind of guy that wants to 
wants to take a knee, and uh, based on uh, what they look like they're discussing here as they go into the huddle, uh, they're going to try to move it down, maybe one, two plays from scrimmage, at least get in field goal territory. They've got the wide out spread. Probably need about 25 yards to give Wright a fair shot at a field goal. Reeves from the gun. Heavy pressure, but unloads it. Finding the boundary was Rashad Slade, the split in. Getting out of bounds. A good catch, and there is a flag on the play. Could be a late hit. You had Tim Betts, the big defensive end, bearing down on David Reeves, and he may have made contact after Reeves unloaded the football. Nope. They're going to call this a hole against Appalachian. Either way that penalty went, it was going to be big for one team or the other. It works in Troy's favor there as the Mountaineers are backed up with only 12 seconds to go in the half. Now let's see if they just call, call it off and take it in down one. Let you rethink things. Certainly does. Really, for the most part, a flawless game. Uh, so really not a whole lot of sloppiness by either team. The penalties have been relatively low. And you're seeing an Appalachian team, which, of course, played uh, a week ago this past Thursday. They had some time to rest. That could work either way against it. And of course, they came off somewhat of a sluggish performance in its open. Jerry Moore not ready to wave the flag on this half as he will throw it out there. Wilcox, beautiful catch. Reeves unloading it and then again taking another shot, but Wilcox catching it in Troy territory and finding his way out of bounds, stopping the clock with just six seconds to go. They've got maybe one more throw. Question is, do you go 10, 15 yards quickly and hope for a quick timeout, or do you try to go for it all here? Other than a breakdown in concentration near the goal line in an earlier series, I'm impressed with Wilcox's hands. Boy, what uh, what nice ability. They had some balls slung his way that have had some speed on him, but he's been steady on pulling the ball in. And now they're talking about it. With 6.6 uh, .6 to go, you probably just launch one, but hey, why not? Well, Appalachian will use the first of their three timeouts. I don't think they would have a chance to use all three anyway with just 6.6 6 yeah. seconds to play. So they'll bring the offense unit or at least the skill position players over to talk things over. And you do this because you're going to be kicking off to start the second half anyway. If you were getting the ball to start of the second half, you'd probably uh, think otherwise. But you're going to be throwing the ball deep enough so if it is intercepted, it's probably not going to be run back or it can hurt you. Next week, Troy heads back the friendly confines of Memorial Stadium where they will play host to Alabama State University. While Appalachian is at home in two weeks facing the Citadel. will be back in conference play. There's been much talk about the brutal schedule right off the bat at the Division 1A school in Wake and at home against the power like Troy State. But after the win against Wake, suddenly they're talking, hey, 2-0 and an open date uh, would be just huge. It does look good if that's the scenario for Appalachian. Second and short. They'll throw the quick out. Wilcox, why did he try to stay in bounds? They will stop it with 1.8 seconds to go. He caught a huge break right there. I think he forgot about the time factor, and had he stayed in bounds, the yeah. clock would have run out. He actually was, uh, I think, pushed uh, back out of bounds. He was trying to cut back. Up field. Yeah, you, you have to be wondering why uh, if you're going to throw it that low, but they're actually going to look at this. We're going to see some uh, a big time attempt here. A 52 yard effort upcoming from Mark Wright as the Appalachian fans get behind him. 57, excuse me. Snap and hold are good. The kick is up. It's got enough leg. It's good. A 57 yard kick from the foot of Mark Wright. What a half he has had. Three for three, including a 57-yarder, <laughs> and it's 16-14, Appalachian over Troy State. Well, I think the kid can kick at this level. <laughs> Helmet off, he wants, to, uh, he wants to show the fans he's the man. The Look. Mountaineers are firing the muskets, and they're firing on all cylinders as well. 16-14, our score, thanks to this kick from Mark Wright, his third of the half, 57 yards. 16-14, our score, App State on top, right here on CSS. Halftime at Kid Brewer Stadium in Boone, North Carolina. 
Number four, Appalachian State. Number two, Troy State. Not disappointing so far. Appalachian has a 16-14 lead on the strength of a 57-yard field goal at the uh, gun and the uh, first half on the foot of Mark Wright. Welcome back, everybody. Pete Yannity with the Southern Conference Commissioner, Alfred White. Uh, and you've got to be uh, pretty proud of what's going on football-wise in your league so far. Appalachian, uh, about a week ago, knocked off Division 1A Wake Forest. Georgia Southern last week acquitted itself very well, hung tough against Georgia. Georgia, and then tonight, what a wonderful battle uh, here in Boone. Well, you're absolutely right, and we're following up a great year for football in the Southern Conference, having the national champion in Georgia Southern and having the Peyton Award winner with uh, Adrian Peterson and having some people's coach of the year and Paul Johnson. We're really looking forward to having uh, a banner follow-up year to what we had last year. This season you'll have a, a Ray Buchanan Award uh, candidate certainly in Corey Hall of Appalachian State. That goes to the top defensive player in 1AA. Uh, Adrian Peterson, 150 yards against Georgia, so he showed he can perform at any level. You've got one of the best running backs in the country at Georgia Southern. And you've got quite a top-heavy league, Georgia Southern, the league, uh, one of the league favorites. They're the number one team in the nation, Appalachian's number four, and Furman number nine. All three of those teams expected a battle for the title. Well, football has been very important to the Southern Conference for a very long time, and uh, I think our, our members are giving a, quite a commitment to football in our conference, and our, I think our coaches and our student athletes are responding very well. You're a 12-team league. Nine of those play football. In basketball, you've made some great statements. Appalachian uh, made a wonderful uh, run with Buzz Peterson. The College of Charleston has uh, done wonderfully uh, on the national stage. And the expansion word during the offseason is being uh, bandied about again around the league. Where are you at this point in possibly adding to, to your ranks? Well, as many may know, the Southern Conference extended invitations for full membership to James Madison and the College of William & Mary back in late May. And those two institutions are still... Uh, investigating uh, what uh, they will possibly do with the Colonial Athletic Association and we really expect them to figure out exactly what their future is with that conference uh, pretty soon and we expect them to take some action on our invitations uh, real soon. And uh, potentially you, you would have, if you added them and, and no one else, uh, nothing else changed with the league, you'd then have 14 overall and 11 football uh, schools. Would you be comfortable with 11 uh, on the football side of things? Well, it's certainly a conversation that we would need to have. Uh, I think uh, having that many uh, football playing members would certainly put us in a position to consider divisional play in football with uh, maybe a, a championship game. Quick note, you're in your third year, and you've really done a, a wonderful job at uh, trying to market this league and uh, step up the image and the recognition of the league. What are some of the, uh, the things you've done and some of the things you're planning to do now in the near future? Well, we certainly thought that uh, repositioning the conference for the new millennium was, uh, was, was high on our list uh, when, when we started this process a couple of years ago. Um, we wanted to really uh, ratchet up the visibility for the conference, uh, ratchet, ratchet up the recognition that the conference had. You know, having this uh, television agreement with college, uh, with uh, CSS has really been uh, helpful for us. Uh, we really think that uh, this is going to be a relationship that's going to go uh, a long way towards uh, promoting the image of the Southern Conference in, in years to come. And we're also working on our corporate marketing program to help uh, fund programs that we can uh, really provide some really special services for our student athletes in our conference. We're commissioner of a league where a lot of exciting things are happening. It's going to be a great fall. Alfred White, commissioner of the Southern Conference, and uh, one of his schools tonight putting on quite a show. Halftime continues. Back in a moment here in Boone, North Carolina. Appalachian and stayed on top of Troy State 16 to 14. We return after this on CSS. Athletic director at Troy State, Johnny Williams, joining me here at halftime as his club looks for a, a victory, and you knew it was not going to be easy coming on the road here, Johnny. No, and we're really excited about this game. Uh, I'll tell you a little bit how this game came about. Last year, well, we were really struggling to find an a, a opponent uh, for our 11th game and had an opportunity to schedule this game. Coach Bladey and all of us, we thought about it long and hard, though, because we knew early on coming in this would be a premium game for one AA, and, and if we could just come up here and play real well, and maybe have a chance to just be in this ball game. It's a great atmosphere for our football players to play in because, you know, in one AA level, the ultimate goal is to make the playoffs and to win a national championship. And hopefully we feel like this might prepare us for the, some of those games down the road. Well, I've got to tell you, both Appalachian and Troy are going to continue to find hard time scheduling. If, if you continue to beat the likes of Cincinnati as you did a year ago and Appalachian, of course, beating Wake one week ago as well. But that's just the start of things for you as you're about to make the move to college football's big time, Division 1A. Right, Chris. This is our last year in Division I AA. Uh, we started our reclassification this past June the 1st. Uh, this 
like I said, we're, we're going to rule ourselves ineligible for the playoffs in the fall of 201. Uh, February of 201 will be our first 1A signing class. We'll offer 25 full scholarships. And then next fall, we'll open the season against Ole Miss on September the 1st. And, you know, we have five 1As, I think, on the schedule at this time. And Miami, Ole Miss, Mississippi State, Maryland, UAB. So I promise you, the arenas are going to get bigger and the crowds are going to get louder. And, you know, hopefully we can grow into that. And we've had good success versus Division I schools as a 1AA school. Matter of fact, a, got really a staggering statistic that I was made aware of the other day. We moved Division I AA in 1993. And as of this year, we're, we're not, we've had nine 1A games and we're 7-2 and two versus 1A competition. So we feel like that the, the talent is available in South Alabama, the Panhandle, Florida, and, the, and in our area to recruit you know, quality players. We're hoping we add the 25 scholarships. Within two to three or four years, we can get competitive with some you know, major schools in this country. One of the more difficult things involved with a move to Division One period, as you did from Division Two several years ago, is, is facilities. And obviously, we're playing at a gorgeous setting here at Appalachian State tonight at Kid Brewer Stadium. But I know you're very proud of the renovations that have been made at your home stadium, Memorial Stadium, and Scrooge Field. Right. We, uh, when we made the announcement two years ago we were going to move our program to Division I, we knew we had to have major upgrades in our facilities, and thus far we've, been, we've pumped about $10 million into our, uh, our stadium, our office complex, our weight room. And, you know, that's just the chip of the iceberg, though. We know for us to maintain our success in Division I, we've got to upgrade our facilities, you know, make it nicer weight rooms, nicer uh, locker rooms. Uh, we've got to recruit like Div Division One, but you know when we made this move to Division One, it was not just an athletic move; it's an institutional move. It's our community's move. It's all also a move for Southeast Alabama. We want to move and elevate our program to make our university a major impact on South Alabama, and especially the Wiregrass area. And you know, as we grow and prosper, and hopefully, you know, we can lend something back to our region to help our help our economy and and you know help help everyone in that area you know grow along with this experience that we're going through. I know these games are tough for you. Former defensive coordinator yourself, having to watch this now as, as an athletic director, always good to visit with you, and best of luck to you the second half of the rest of the year. Well, Chris, thank you. Johnny Williams, the athletic director at Troy State University, joining us here at halftime. Kid Brewer Stadium, where Appalachian State leads Troy State by a score of 16 to 14. Mountaineers and the Trojans looking like two of the top five teams in America. We'll have the halftime stats for you right after this on CSS. Beautiful night in Boone, North Carolina. Home folks think it's a beautiful scoreboard as well. 16-14, Appalachian State leading Troy State along with Pete Yannity. I'm Chris Stewart back with you in the Appalachian Mountains. A very eventful first half of play. As we take a look at some of the action, it started early for Troy State. Their first series, a big throw and catch, setting up this 31-yard touchdown run by Demontre Carter. Superman. Diving for the goal line, Appalachian able to answer back. Reeves to Wilcox, a combination we talked about quite often in the first half. He had eight catches in the first half, a new career high, 99 yards. That's also a new career high in just one half. That was perhaps the man of the hour, or at least the first half hour anyway. Mark Wright, a 40-yard field goal, then a 27-yard field goal, giving Appalachian at the time a 13-7 lead. Then Nutter, passer turned runner here, the option able to score from three yards out. And then the cannon shot, 57 yards, the school record. I don't have to tell you what happened there. You can see the reaction from Mark Wright. Three for three. The guy didn't even kick last week, uh, at least field goal attempts. He gets his first field goal uh, in, in his uh, college career in this game in the first half, and he gets a school record now, 57 yards. Beats the old mark for Appalachian by two yards. Two-point lead for Appalachian State right here on CSS. Two-point lead for Appalachian State in front of the home folks. They lead the number two ranked Troy State Trojans. Not a shock there, really. Appalachian State number four in America this week. Troy State ranked second. Both teams 1-0 in a tremendous first half, as the first half numbers will indicate. And think about this matchup early in the season. It, uh, you give credit to both schools for, for booking it instead of booking maybe teams that could get an easy win. But 
this game will have a huge impact later on in the year when it comes, uh, especially to one double-A playoff seeding. Pretty good chances uh, that each team will be in the postseason, but it could affect them a notch or two simply having competed in this kind of game tonight. Only a 12-yard differential in the total yardage output. 31 of Troy's 36 yards coming on the touchdown run by Demontre Carter. And while David Reeves had a tremendous first half, he was uh, for the half 15 of 20, 165 yards and a touchdown. Brock Nutter, no slouch either, 11 of 16, 175. I think perhaps the biggest number in a game like this is the fact there are no interceptions, no turnovers thus far. That's been huge. Two teams that take care of the ball well. Not a whole lot of flashing offense for that 36 yards rushing by Troy Sage. Again, we noted earlier tonight, Wake Forest only went for 55 yards on the ground against Appalachian, so they yeah, established themselves a better pace at this point, though, for Troy. 30 minutes gone. Another 30 still to come, perhaps even more. Great matchup. We'll have the second half for you right after this. Two undefeated football teams. That will change tonight for one of them, obviously, as number two, Troy State. It's made the long haul from Troy, Alabama, all the way to the Appalachian Mountains of Boone, North Carolina, taking on Appalachian State University. And you're looking at if Appalachian can hold this uh, lead, potentially having the number one and number two teams in the same conference, the Southern. Furman uh, was leading a last check in its game against uh, Newberry, a, a Division II team they will probably beat. They were number nine coming in. They might even move up. So the Southern Conference could have uh, three of the top, uh, who knows, six or seven teams uh, come the new rankings on Monday. Would not be surprising at all. And also, if Appalachian were to hang on, it would mean that in successive years they have defeated the number one and number two teams in America at this very stadium, yep. Kid Brewer Stadium. Georgia Southern the victim one year ago in a, a great ball game. This league the past couple of years of Southern, it uh, took a, a late effort by Oregon State to turn back uh, Georgia Southern last year on the West Coast. And then last week, uh, Georgia Southern uh, did well against uh, Georgia to make the game uh, interesting. Last year, Furman just humiliated North Carolina on its home field. And uh, some others in the league, if uh, they haven't beaten some of the 1As, have certainly held their own uh, in, in recent years. Brian Wright, great first half, kicks this one off, fielded by Jonathan Carter, 15-20. Still on his feet, 30, looking for another block, tripped up as he nears the 40-yard line, but a nice return by Jonathan Carter, the 6-foot, 182-pound senior from Lineville, Alabama. And really some nice work uh, back in coverage by Sam Smalls, who uh, saved that potentially being devastating for Appalachian to fight off a blocker. But uh, both Carters uh, can certainly fly. Jonathan, number two, and DeMontre, number one. I think Mark Wright's field goal to end the half was actually longer than that kickoff was <laughs> from his foot to start this second half. 57-yarder, a school record, giving Appalachian State their 16-14 advantage as we begin the second half. That's DeMontre Carter, the deep man. He started the game for Troy and played a good bit of the half, but uh, again, Troy will use several people in that backfield. At the tailback slot, they'll use LeBaron Black. They'll also, from time to time, use Javar Dunbar, who actually started a week ago at Alabama A&M, he's a walk-on and a fifth-year senior that had just played so hard, they felt like they owed it to the young man to give him the starting opportunity against A&M. He earned that, but DeMontre Carter played so well, nine carries, 81 yards, and a touchdown against A&M. I felt like he earned the shot here against Appalachian State. Second down, we'll call it nine, line of scrimmage right at their own 40-yard line for Troy. Nutter running out of time, unloads it, and he is lucky that that is not six for Appalachian State. Deshaun Martin, they picked on him a few times tonight. They almost picked on him one time too many. Martin, who's uh, shown up quite a bit uh, in what looked like man right there on the other side of the field there in his zone, but uh, that time, one step away, maybe even uh, looking up too early. Maybe he saw the end zone before the ball was grasped ever so close. Hayward Skipper, the intended receiver. And now third and long for Troy. Four wideouts in formation. The quick out, they'll swing it to Carter. He tries to break the tackle, can't do it. Nice coverage across the way, Justin Severns. 1999, second team All-Southern Conference selection. He had nine tackles one week ago. Good play by the junior from Cartersville, Georgia. 
A linebacker on the move. That's his assignment. A tough one indeed for a linebacker to have to cover a speedster like Devontae Carter, but Severn's doing a nice job that time coming up. Matt Allen set to punt. First half, four kicks, 42.8 yard average. Jose White, the man awaiting that kick. He had two punt returns for a total of 38 yards. Beautiful booming kick from the foot of Matt Allen, and this one will bounce into the end zone, try to stay out, but instead it will be a touchback. First and 10 from their own 20-yard line for Appalachian State. That's when we come back. 13.49 to go, third quarter. The Mountaineers leading Troy State by two right here on CSS, your source for sports in the Southeast. Two-point lead for Appalachian State as they will have possession of football for the first time here in the second half. David Reeves, the quarterback, he's gone the distance. Worked the second half one week ago against Wake Forest in relief of Jeremiah. But he's the man. And he's been the man here in the, in the uh, first 32 minutes of play anyway. A great half, 15 of 20. 165 yards, although he misses the mark here. And we mentioned the offensive line's doing a good job. Look in the middle of the screen. Kareem Razak made a great block on Nick Colbert, who was trying to come around the outside and opening more protection. So they're doing a nice job keeping uh, running back, and, and at times they're dropping what looks like an H-back uh, to uh, protect Reeves, and he has not uh, been on the run all night. And again, while we've had some near interceptions, neither quarterback has thrown in the wrong hands. Near hookup with Joey Gibson there as they'll go with the option. Will the Mountaineers, the pitch to Razak. Trying to find some room and another good job by Troy State. One thing that both of these two defenses do so well is run to the football. Great team speed on that side for both teams. Speed kills. That's what it's all about. And uh, when you've got a defense that can fly, that's uh, when you get uh, yards for loss. That's when you make things happen. That's when you keep an offense uh, completely out of sync. And uh, that is true. You've got uh, two really two teams that you probably, uh, if, you, if you had a, if they face a running team, you can pretty much put it away because teams that cannot spread it out, open it up, and air it out against these ball clubs uh, will not be able to do anything against the defense just solely on the ground. Third and long for Appalachian State. They were two of eight in the first half. Third down conversion attempts. With three wideouts in formation, Reeves working from the gun. With time, going for it all. He's got a man out there. It is knocked away on a beautiful defensive effort. Antonio Thompson, check that, Rashawn Reed. Number 16, putting a hand up and knocking it away from Troy Alby, who had a half step on it. Rashawn Reed, just a sophomore, but they love his ability to cover. He does it uh, ever so well. And they've had some great cover guys in this secondary for Troy over the year, but he is a, a speedster. And he's also uh, got a pretty good uh, build about him, uh, 5'10", 184. Nathan McKinney set to punt. First half, three for a 42-yard average, a low liner that will be run down by Reed inside his 40. Looking for a block, finds one, can't find another, but he does get it back to midfield. Good field position for Troy State. 13-20 left to play in quarter number three. The Trojans trailing 16-14. You know, if you're a big fan of an SEC football team, then CSS most likely has a night that will be of particular interest to you. Works like this. Each weeknight is themed to a different SEC school or schools, and on those nights you'll see those schools' coaches' shows usually followed by the re-air of the previous week's game from one of those schools. For example, on Mondays, it's Tennessee and Vanderbilt night. Tuesdays is Georgia night. Wednesday, it's Mississippi State and Ole Miss. Thursday is Kentucky and Arkansas. Friday night, Alabama and Auburn. CSS, it's your source for sports in the Southeast. I would think the uh, Georgia Coaches Show will be an interesting view this week based on what happened to the number nine Bulldogs. They're upset in Columbia, South Carolina earlier today, 21 to 10. Fumble on the play, Nutter reacts, unloads it. And nobody on the field of play well, anywhere there, near that football. There were some uh, black and gold jerseys near it. It was the Appalachian State cheerleaders <laughs> over there on the, uh, the track in front of the stands. Uh, but it almost looks like they applied the NFL out of the pocket rule where the QB can just throw it away if he's uh, out of the pocket. But uh, Well, you can tell that that young man has started 26 games prior to tonight. Perhaps it should have been intentional grounding, but... It's not if it's not called, and he <laughs> knew that he had to unload that football or take a huge loss, and heads-up play by Brock Nutter. Still second and ten, though, 
from right at the 50 yard line. Both teams love working from the gun. Carter trying to get to the corner. Hemmed up after about a four yard gain. Looked like he had a, a lot more. A little bit of a delay, a little bit of draw. Maybe that's what they'll do to try to throw Appalachian uh, State off the mark and, and get some rushing yardage because it's obviously having an impact on their passing game that they're not able to move the football. But we saw kind of a counter uh, that time, and Carter's a good guy to run that because he has such an explosive first step that even waiting a second or so, not much of a difference when you can fly like he can. Third and five. First half, Troy State just one of six third down conversions. Let's see what type of success they have here. And they're in an eye uh, in a five-yard situation. More of a power look from Troy. They'll go on a straight handoff to Carter. He's got running room inside the 40, still on his feet. Dragging tacklers to the 26-yard line. A surprise call on third and five. They run right at the heart of Appalachian State's defense. Montre Carter with... Interference run by Thad Buton, helping to spring him to that big pickup, a first down at the Appalachian 25. Not only did they run right at him, they lay lined up as if they were going to run right at him. No delay, no draw, nothing. Just simply Buton laying a nice block uh, right off the uh, the bat on uh, the defensive end, uh, Josh Jeffries, and then Carter does a lot more on his own. Here we come. Can you stop us? That time the Mountaineers could not. Here comes Troy again. More power football. Carter hurdling the line and able to bounce his way to about the 22. Not a lot there, but athletic ability gave Carter the three yards. They like Buton uh, as much for his power running ability for, uh, for his blocking, and he does a nice job with that. And again, some of the guys maybe he blocked for in the past didn't have, or last season, didn't have the, uh, the breakaway speed that DeMontre Carter does. They've also changed up some assignments, and uh, now Corey Hall, the, uh, the best cornerback on the field, is uh, guarding the fastest receiver, uh, number two, Thompson, for uh, Troy State. That wasn't the case most of the time in the first half. McAlilly still not in the game on the offensive line. He went out with an injury in the second quarter, but yet Troy still able to move the ball well on the offensive front. Rodney Jordan in the football game, along with Blake Brothers. Looks like they've moved Jordan to a guard slot with McAlilly out of the football game. Third and four. Let's see if Troy has the nerve to line up in that eye set once again and try to run it right out the Mountaineers, or will they try to spread the field a bit? Nope. Here we go. Power set. Yep. This time with LeBaron Black as the tailback. He dots the eye behind Buton. Strong side of the right. They'll go play action this time. Nutter unloads it. Incomplete. Looking for Jonathan Carter. Had both hands on it. Couldn't bring it down. A gutsy throw because right on him every step of the way was Corey Hall. This is why last week Wake Forest threw the ball uh, just one time in Hall's direction and why he only made four tackles. Teams have learned to stay away from him. Now, granted, he uh, wasn't up in the face necessarily of Carter, but he probably realized that about that point it was going to take an exceptional play for anything that happened to him. Well, we've seen the kicking game from Appalachian State tonight. Mark Wright, kind of a forgotten man coming into this game, but not anymore. Not after three field goals, including a 57-yarder, but now an attempt coming from the foot of Lawrence Tynes. Kick is up, and the kick is good. Tynes giving Troy State a 17-16 lead over Appalachian with 10-28 left to go here in the third quarter. Glad you're with us on CSS. Troy State Band enjoying things after the field goal by Lawrence Tynes. Good from 36 yards out. We were talking during the break. Pete Gannity may not be a perfect game in the minds of the coaches, but I don't know what more you could ask for out of this game thus far. No missed field goals. There have been no fumbles lost, uh, no interceptions thrown, and each team, uh, for the most part, has uh, has a pretty decent you know, running its plays. I mean, there have been some great defensive uh, plays on either side, quite a battle. Kick by Tynes, fielded by White at his one. Coming to the far side of the field. Trying to shake free from a couple of tacklers. Another nice return across the 25 to the 26-yard line. Again, excellent field position for Appalachian State as we look at the scoring drive from Troy. Covering 31 yards, seven plays, time of two minutes, 52 seconds. 
capped by the 36-yarder by Tynes. As we told you during the pregame, a preseason All-Southland Football League selection, a senior on this club along with the punter for the Troy State Trojans, Matt Allen. Mountaineers will work from the shotgun. Five wideouts in formation. We'll go on the option, the little whoopee pass, and he was past the line of scrimmage, was he not? Finally, yes, he was. Finally the flag. Yeah. It was so blatant <laughs> that the official on the far side of the field had to stop and think about it for a minute. They were trying to run that little option as there's an injured player on the field for Troy State, and they were trying to move Razak on that little option in front and go with the shuffle pass. The problem was nobody picked up Reeves until he was about two or three yards past the line of scrimmage. So obviously, even though it was the underhand, an illegal forward pass. They might try a flying wedge next on it. <laughs> it almost looked like Reeves thought that he was the running back waiting for the ball. That's the way it lined up. They, they said they were just out of place. Reeves should have been where Razak was, should have been where Razak was and, and vice versa. Antonio Thompson, yeah. the injured player for Troy State. But he's bouncing up, and that's uh, that's big because that could be a major factor if he were not around. He'll have to go off uh, here for a play, but it looks like he'll be okay and be, be back soon. It's another one of those preseason all-conference selections for Larry Blakeney's squad. First team All-Southland Football League. Some great football played at the 1AA level and some great conferences, not just a few good teams sprinkled throughout. you got some great leagues. The Southland Football League, a tremendously tough conference. We've talked about the Southern sure. number one team in America, yep. number four team in America, and number, number nine. nine as well, and, and, and those the, numbers could change. And the Southern Conference folks may wonder about the Southland. That's your Stephen F. Austin, McNeese State, Sam Houston State, in addition to Troy State. And it's uh, it's the football uh, league that's pulled out of the, the Southland Conference, which has other members that don't play uh, don't play football. Second and ten upcoming. Razak went in motion. He'll catch the little swing pass from Reeves and turn it upfield. But boy, he is level. What a nice play defensively made by Troy State. The whole world got out there, and it was. Uh, and this is without uh, their best uh, run uh, cover guy on the field. But uh, leading the way is a guy who led their league in interceptions last year, Chris Archie, and actually lost his starting job. Couldn't start uh, on this defense this year. He was out there, and also uh, Jimmy McLean, guy they expect some big things out of, a uh, outside uh, linebacker who uh, moved out there this year, and he uh, made life real difficult on Razak. Razak had turned his shoulders upfield and had a full head of steam going, and he is not a small player. He's a guy that very compact at 5'11", 205, and he just ran into a wall in Jimmy McLean, who's only 6'1", 230, out of Enterprise, Alabama. So third and six upcoming now for the Mountaineers. Reeves to the far side, going for it all. That is Young, or excuse me, Joey Gibson, he's trying to hook up with. With him step for step was David Filial, the cornerback, 5'9", 185 at a sophomore from Atlanta's North Clayton High School. The Appalachian fans wanting pass interference. Filial, the step younger, by step. Yeah, he was with him. He's the younger brother of Marino Filial, who started his career at Troy State as a quarterback, then wrapped up as a tremendous receiver. In fact, was signed by the Atlanta Falcons, was part of their club during preseason camp. A great versatile athlete that Troy lost, but now David Filial trying to fill in things for Troy as that punt is dropped by Reed and he is very lucky, lucky that that one just bounced right back in his lap and Troy will start off first and 10 from their own 22 yard line with 9.23 remaining here in quarter number three and the Trojans with the one point advantage over Appalachian State. We've got a full day of college football for you on CSS next Saturday. The day kicks off at noon Eastern with Miami of Ohio at 16th ranked Ohio State. 3.30, it's a fierce intrastate rivalry when Iowa State takes on Iowa. At 7, we'll begin our Gulf South Conference game of the week series, Valdosta State at Southern Arkansas. Then at 10, it's a tape delay broadcast of 9th ranked Virginia Tech hosting Rutgers in a Big East Conference battle. Four football games, all big ones next Saturday right here on CSS. Your source for sports in the southeast. Demontre Carter, your source for a big game for Troy. He's going to go the distance. Troy State on the legs of Demontre Carter building on their 17-16 lead. That will stretch it now to 23-16. 9.08 to go. Wow, the explosion. He got away from a couple of defenders, and once he did, see you later. Tremendous speed for a guy who, again, started his career at Auburn, played as a true freshman in the Southeastern Conference, had uh, a pretty promising year, and uh, 
I don't know if he's just out of breath or maybe oh, he's, he's, I think he's out of breath. I think you're right. He hasn't run, or he hasn't run like that. I don't think since high school, but a huge, huge play in this game. Yep. 78 yards covering. Extra point attempt by Tynes is up. It is good as well. And just like that, Troy State pushing its lead now to eight points, 24 to 16 with 9.08 to play. This is a young man who was very skilled coming out of high school, but just really not big and strong enough to play every week in the SEC. But you can see he doesn't have to take a back seat to anybody in the speed department. Well, they're going to hear about it in the film session tomorrow. Well, uh, Josh Jeffries, uh, for one, and uh, Remy Awaolo uh, will also hear about it, too. He was a strong safety who came up and tried to force the action, and he uh, really never had a great chance at him. But then the uh, second breakdown coming from the uh, the right end, uh, Jeffries, and uh, that was all she wrote. He made a nice spin, and uh, simply eluding two others at that point is Carter. He was gone. You know, they've got a track that goes around the field here, and it looked like he was running the 100 meters once he uh, broke away. He got a great block. We saw it on that last replay yes, from Brent Harrison, the guard who had dropped to this side, and really it was like a running play. It's just another creative way of getting the ball in the hands of Demontre Carter. Well, there's your scoring drive for lack of a better term. One play, 78 yards, covering 15 seconds. 78-yard touchdown run by Demontre Carter. I think he has found a home in Troy, Alabama. Touchdown last week, 81 yards total rushing against Alabama A&M. And in this contest, on the receiving end, three catches, 86 yards and a touchdown to go with the 68 yards on eight carries and a touchdown as well. What a momentum swing here in the second half. Troy State came down, grabbed the lead with the field goal. Appalachian State, uh, just like the first half, starting sluggishly, and then bam, right like that, they find themselves down by eight. There have not been a lot of glaring mistakes on either side, but you cannot nap on either side, or the other team will take the advantage. That's why it was goal line across the 20, brought down, hit first there, a nice special teams play by Donnie Young, a linebacker by trade, making the stop on special teams, and he's very happy about it, as you might expect. Momentum now back in Troy's favor, with nine minutes even to go in the third quarter. A lot of football still to be played, but if you're Appalachian, just like we saw at the early moments of this contest, Pete, you don't want to give Troy too much, too much of a lead and too much distance between themselves and Appalachian right now. They struck back quickly and again uh, we saw some performers maybe we didn't expect to do all that much like Wilcox uh, with those eight first half grabs. Now they've got to find a similar answer here in the second. More of a power look as they go to Razak and another good play defensively made by Troy. That was the big lineman able to get a hand on him. Davern Williams, another Auburn transfer. He's from Montgomery, 6'3", 289, and a sophomore. Played at Jeff Davis High School, and he just gets a paw on Razak and says, no, sir, you're not going to go any further. And again, amazed at the strength of some of the Troy players to stop a guy that runs as well as Razak. And maybe there, though, we saw the difference between a Demontre Carter and Razak. That one half step Carter might have... Uh, Eluded that, but Razak still a fine back. Still got four yards on it. Sure. Second and six. They'll go with the play action. Reeves with time. Ball was deflected as I believe Williams is the man that got a fingertip on it as he came in in pursuit of the quarterback, David Reeves. But again, a ball tipped and a third down situation upcoming, third and six for Appalachia. A super defensive front, and again, we haven't really seen them get too much to Reeves. That's a credit to a much bigger Appalachian offensive line, but uh, Stacy Rocker, the former, or Tracy Rocker, the former Auburn uh, defensive uh, lineman standout, a guy who won both the uh, Outland and Lombardi uh, awards, uh, is the, uh, the coach for that area. And he had a, the Buchanan Award winner, top defensive player in 1AA last year, and Al Lucas, who uh, went off to uh, camp with the Steelers. So they've got some talent. They've got uh, some pretty good experience leading that bunch. Third down and six. Five wideouts in formation as they work from the gun. The quick out, pass complete, but not enough for the first down. Connecting again was Reeves with Joey Gibson, the senior flanker out of Asheville, North Carolina's Reynolds High School. But he is shy of the first down mark. And once again, It'll be Nathan McKinney that has to come on and punt for the Mountaineers. And you wonder at this point, you've, you've taken an eight-point lead if you're Troy. You can feel you've got the momentum. You've got the, uh, the punter inside of the 20-yard line. Do you maybe apply a little bit more pressure? Why not? They want to put some heat on McKinney. 
Either way, you're going to probably have decent field position. Token pressure, Phil Yaw charging. What a kick, though, by McKinney. Inside the five, and it will be touched down there by Appalachian. They down it at the four-yard line. A booming kick off the foot of Nathan McKinney. We'll give you the total distance on that right after this on CSS. That young man deserves a bit of refreshment, Nathan McKinney, following his 65-yard punt that has pinned Troy State back inside their own five-yard line at the four, we'll call it. Mountaineer fans trying to get behind their football team. The Appalachian State University Mountaineers trailing at home 24 to 16 to number two Troy State. Great matchup, number four versus number two. There was movement. Will they whistle the play dead? No, they won't. Nutter looking long, trying to hook up with Jonathan Carter. It's incomplete, but I believe that Troy will be able to move out of the shadow of their own end zone after a step off. What a huge defensive series this is for Appalachian. They kind of felt things slip away after the holding the two-point halftime lead. Troy has come back and taken the eight-point edge. And Troy is the, the kind of team that has shown some explosiveness, and uh, they're maybe better off in this kind of situation now than a year ago because they have that added facet of DeMontre Carter, and they, they've stepped up the passing game, too. We've talked a lot about the players in this game, as you should. It's the players that, that make the plays. They determine the outcome. But we've got a great coaching matchup as well. You know, with Jerry Moore for... Appalachian State and Troy State's Larry Blakeney. This has been a special week for them because they're mm -hmm. they know they're they're matching wits with across the way from one of the better staffs in America yeah. in, in both counts. It's a uh, should uh, Jordan disciple uh, Blakeney and a uh, Caden Fry disciple in Jerry Moore. So the lineage is is pretty nice too. Utah not able to find much running room at all. We haven't called his name very often as a ball carrier. Last week, a great game against Alabama A&M. 14 carries, 88 yards, tops for this Troy State team. But he's had a pass reception that went for about 16 yards, I believe. But other than that, he's been pretty quiet. Fans in the stadium may start thinking, especially if they hold in these next two downs, about last year when Appalachian really turned things around against Georgia Southern, blocking a punt deep uh, in Eagles territory, it could be a similar scenario in a moment. No gain, second and five, picked up a couple on that play. Still third and about three, and kind of a tough play call up coming for Larry Blakeney. You want the first down, you want to keep the drive going, but you also want to be very careful not to make a huge mistake here that would allow Appalachian to either get the ball back or score on defense as well, which could easily happen. This would certainly be the wrong time for a, a team to lose this game's first fumble, or for that matter, to have the first interception thrown from Troy State's standpoint. Haven't had a, a significant uh, turnover uh, yet. They're going to go with a power look on third and three. Wayne Thomas dotting the eye. And we've got a flag on the play. I don't believe they out of time on the, out of time on the play clock. I think we're going to have the layup game, which will change the complexion of this even more. Tell you, Larry Blaney may stay with the same look. You know, they lined up earlier in a third and five in a power set. Ran it right at Appalachian and picked up about 15 on the play. They did it another time on third and four with the same result. Let's see if they try to do it here if for no other reason than to try and be very conservative and give their veteran punter Matt Allen a little bit of room. You don't want to, again, don't want to make a mistake here that might force Allen to have to punt from deep in his own end zone, although obviously he would if they did not gain any yardage here. It is third and seven. They've got to get to the 15 to pick up the first. Troy State, the ball, and as you see on your screen, the lead as well. Inside handoff, few time, nothing there. Great defense again by the Mountaineers. Justin Severns, the man leading the charge, the junior linebacker out of Cartersville, Georgia's at Ayersville High School. He forced the action, so did uh, Jason Sowell, the, uh, the tackle. Watch this, just pure strength. Everything's tied in. Uh, the offensive formation, the defense, it was almost like a, an eight-man look. And seven's big number 27 and others get in there and force the action. Just huge size in the middle for Appalachian, which is why you just can't run right out of that defense featuring Jamie Lover in the nose tackle. 6'3", nearly 300 pounds. So a big hoss right there in the middle, and uh, it's a tough, 
team to try to go straight forward. So Matt Allen here on the afternoon has had five punts, an average of 45.8 thus far. Has a pressure-packed opportunity upcoming here. Jose White awaiting the kick. It's a short one that White will allow to hit right at midfield, and it takes a Troy State bounce inside the 45, and they will watch the air deflate right out of the football at about the 43-yard line. You know, if you're a big fan of an SEC football team, then CSS most likely has an night that will be of particular interest to you. You know, it works like this. Each weeknight is themed to a different SEC school or schools. But on those nights, you'll see those schools' coaches' shows usually followed by the re-air of the previous week's game from one of those schools. An example, Mondays is Tennessee and Vandy night. Tuesdays, Georgia night. Wednesday, Mississippi State and Ole Miss. Thursday, Kentucky and Arkansas. Fridays, Alabama and Auburn. CSS, it's your source for sports in the Southeast. Great field position again for Appalachian. We've seen that about four or five times tonight as going in motion will be Young. They'll give it to the deep man, Razak. Running room inside the 45, pumped down at the 43-yard line of Troy State. Mountaineers on the move, a first down for Appalachian in Troy State territory. Travis Bozeman might have saved disaster for Troy that time. He moved in in the uh, free safety. You don't like it when your free safety is uh, having a, to make a big stop like that. That means that the running back's gotten into your secondary. And that time, Bozeman, big play, but Razak starting to pick it up. Rashad Slade bringing in the play as Joey Gibson heads to the sideline. Just three catches so far combined for Slade and uh, Albi, and those are the two big uh, wide receivers. That's Albi coming to the near side of your screen in motion. On the delay, handoff, Razak looking for the 40-yard line. He'll be brought down about the 41, actually. Haven't called his name Up much to tonight, but there's big number 92 for Troy State, Vernon Marble. Junior defensive end from a great high school program in Ashland, Alabama, Clay County High School. Part of a great defense there and one of the lower classifications in the Alabama High School Athletic Association. Had a great defense during his time there. Won some state championships, 6'2", 260. Jose Gamboa in there at a defensive tackle spot, number 93 for Troy, as that one is unloaded. A nice reaction by Daniel Wilcox. Great effort, first of all, by Reeves to just get that football off. But Wilcox, recognizing that it was underthrown somewhat, had to hustle over. And you've got two banged-up players for Appalachian. We'll talk about it in a moment. Look at the hit he takes, though. Shelton Felton put all the pressure on him, but unbelievable he could get it uh, that far, throwing uh, off his back, uh, the back, uh, his heel, and player down in the field as we watch the replay again. That is some kind of play on both ends, especially Reeves able to get it downfield. It is Wayne Smith that's the right tackle who's down on the play and now is helped up. But I tell you, David Reeves looked like he was knocked a little woozy as well. As he got up, he was a little bit wobbly and still trying to clear the cobwebs, as you see there. Thought he might be given the standing eight count for a moment because he took one heck of a pop. Shelton Felton, 6'2", 250. And he's coming at full speed. And Reeves is backpedaling. Check out the pop once again on Reeves, and now you know why he was asking for the uh, towel. And fortunately, not the stool in the corner. <laughs> Cut me, Mick. Cut Oof, me. I was going to say, at that point, you're looking at Burgess Meredith right in your face. <laughs> I tell you what, you know, Jerry Moore has to flinch every time Reeves gets hit. They really don't want to have to go to and they've had to. Joe Burchett. Yeah, they are. They are going to go to Burchett, as Reeves was knocked out of the game at least for a play. He's a sophomore from Clemens, North Carolina. He'll go on third and inches. The quarterback sneak. He's got the first down. Joe Burchett, 6'4", 205, a sophomore from Clemens, North Carolina. You talk to a lot of people around town, they'll tell you, this is a guy that's got a very lively arm. We won't see it yet, though. He comes in for one play and does his job. That center quarterback exchange is not something that coaches take for granted and you got to run a guy out there with three minutes to go in the third quarter but big time matchup and he does his job and a drive you need some points on probably could have been a better scenario though all he had to do was uh, lean into the center to get the first down yardage 
First and 10 from the Troy State 33. The eye set. Reeves looking. He did not see the man coming from the weak side. That's Tony Ford, big defensive end from Holt High School in Tuscaloosa, Alabama. 6'1", 250, and a senior. He did not need to come right back in and get hit like that. Ford, tough. Wow, that was big time pop. It may have been a Ford. I have a feeling it felt like a Greyhound coming at him and knocking him or, down. Or at least something from the truck line. <laughs> have you driven a Ford lately? Well, a Ford just drove Reeves <laughs> right into the ground. Second and 13. Clock moving under two and a half to go in the third quarter. They'll try to set up the screen across the middle. They do. Nice catch result, but a great defensive play. That's Tim Betts, the defensive end. And we talked earlier about the way that both defenses run to the football so well. That's a 6'2", 231-pound defensive end running down a tailback with very good speed. And both teams line up as 4-3 defenses, but their ends are, are so quick, it's like having an additional outside linebacker on, on either side for each uh, based on what... Uh, what these guys can do with their speed. Now you're looking at a third and 11. Again, you've moved inside Troy State territory. You don't want to leave this quarter without cutting back into that lead because uh, although it's only eight points, which is uh, one uh, score and a two-point conversion, it could be huge in the fourth quarter against this defense. Third and 11. They've got to get to the 23. Reeves looking for it all. He's got a receiver there. They'll catch it. No. Incomplete pass. Joey Gibson, the flanker, went up and made a beautiful catch, but when he landed, he was out of bounds. It's incomplete, and that means for the fourth time tonight, Mark Wright will have to come on and try a field goal. We know it's within his range because it's on this side of the Appalachian Trail, right? Anything on this side is within his range. Not good to see number 72 on the ground. That's Osi Yumanura. 6'4", 270-pound sophomore that we highlighted during the pregame. We knew that he would not be able to start tonight because of a sprained ankle he suffered earlier in the week in practice, but the sophomore from Auburn, Alabama, down and doesn't appear to be an ankle right now. Could be wrong, but it's like they may have had the wind knocked out of him. Let's see how he walks. No, it's that ankle again. And his... His evening could be through. I don't know that it, I don't think it was anything serious earlier in the week. Certainly would not have allowed him to play. And it doesn't look like it's a severe injury there. But yeah, when you're carrying around that much weight, that big a fella, it's awfully tough when the wheels are not at 100%. Well, 57 yards to end the first half. 51 should be a piece of cake, right? Well, we'll inside of his range. We'll see. Mark Wright from the far hash mark. No wind at all to contend with. Hold Joey Gibson does a good job. The kick is up. The kick is no good. Had plenty of leg, but it hooked just wide. And Troy State dodges a bullet. Right. Disappointed. But put a great foot into that one. Just could not drive it home from 51 yards. He made them earlier from 40, 27, and a school record 57 yards. But Mark Wright with his first miss of the season from 51 yards out. Jerry Moore now flips his notes over the defensive side of the football. They've got to find an answer to slow down Troy State. They found the first way to do it, keep the ball away from them. Good job by Appalachian State offense to do just that. Push them back, uh, give them bad field position, make them go conservative. Now they're out uh, near the 35-yard line. They're back to their four wides. We didn't see that last series when they were pinned inside their 15. Three-wheeling it just a bit is Troy on offense. They'll swing it out there, pass complete. Pollard on the near sideline was the tight end. That's Adrian Moore. Haven't called his name tonight, but he is a player that Larry Blakeney likes to call on a handful of times during a ball game. Two catches, 26 yards a week ago. The sophomore from Oxford not able to pick up more than one. That's because of a great Appalachian play defensively. And again, a swing pass to a guy listed as a tight end, meaning that he's got the speed to be able to go one-on-one -on -one with someone in the open field. One of the assistants for Troy came running up, calling for a face mask. They thought that uh, things got a little frisky there by Wesley Hunter, but uh, the flag did not fly. I think they got a legitimate complaint, but the officials didn't see it. Second down and eight upcoming. From the Troy 36, they'll go on the inside handoff, and not a lot of running room there at all. That's the big fullback, Laquitius Justice, 5'10", 232, a sophomore from Op, Alabama. Second carry of the night as the clock ticks near the one-minute mark of the third quarter. So 
Justice will come to the sidelines. That means Thad Buton, the starter, six feet, 250, and a senior from Atlanta, will come on. Third and long, though, for the Trojans. They've got to get across their own 44 to keep this drive alive. Four wideouts in formation. Nutter. Gets the snap, and he didn't get it off in time, did he? Flags fly in. I believe they took too long for the second time this half. Pete, it looked like he may have been checking off the line of scrimmage. I think he was because two different blitz looks were shown to him. First, the strong safety moved up. Uh, Awolo looked like he might come from uh, Nutter's right, and then the uh, one of the linebackers also stepped up, and... Uh, it did not look like uh, either of those uh, Troy State was uh, ready for. Looking over, getting the sign from the sideline. Don Jacobs, the offensive coordinator for Troy State in his 10th year with the Troy program. John Wiley's been here at Appalachian State for 10 years as the defensive coordinator, hoping his Mountaineer unit can come up with a stop. Third 14, Nutter looking. All day, now he runs out of time, and he is brought down back at the 26-yard line. K.T. Stovall, the defensive end, able to wrap him up for a loss here towards the end of quarter number three. Stovall's been Mr. Excitement tonight for Appalachian. That time fought off the block, and then he sprints back to get under here. You see him fighting off at the right side of your screen. He's then able to get by a, a guy he's given fits to all night, Charles Thomas, and that time Stovall comes up huge. 45 minutes have been just as good as advertised. Why would you go anywhere? Great ball game. Number two, Troy State leading number four, Appalachian State, 24 to 16 as we move to quarter number four. Stay right where you are, folks. Don't go anywhere. Final 15 minutes upcoming on CSS. It's your source for sports in the Southeast. Quite often, a matchup will not live up to its pregame hype. This one does not fit in that category. It is just as good as we expected. Number two, Troy State leading Appalachian State 24 to 16, live from Boone, North Carolina, as we move to the fourth quarter, along with Pete Yannity. I'm Chris Stewart. So glad you're with us tonight for what has been a great matchup in college football. Troy State punting away to Appalachian. Troy hanging on to an eight-point advantage. Jose White awaits the kick from Lawrence Tynes. His seventh punt of the evening will be fielded right at the 30. Bobbles it and now looks for room. Lost the football, but Appalachian recovers. Works out in their favor for Appalachian. He fumbled it forward into the hands of Jonathan Lyles. And he lost it initially and then had it stripped free. And a great job to scoop up the loose football for Appalachian. It was knocked away by Jimmy McLean, and they, they get about five to eight extra yards on that fumble. A couple of times that's happened tonight. Earlier, Razak fumbled one, but it just kept going with him and, and ran out of bounds. This is at least the fourth time that Appalachian has started beyond their own 40-yard line, perhaps five times tonight. Great field position again. They hand it to the deep man, getting up near the 44-yard line. It was Kareem Razak. Look at the passing numbers in this game. 257 by Brock Nutter of Troy State. Not a bad night either for David Reeves. 182 yards, although he has cooled off slightly after 165 yards passing in the first half alone. And for the most part, of the last series was not the case. Reeves has had probably a little bit better protection, I'd say, on the night than, than Nutter has. Both have thrown touchdown passes, Reeves and Nutter. Neither has thrown an interception. On play action, Reeves looking near side. He's got a man. It's complete. And getting out of bounds with first down yardage was Joey Gibson, 6'2", 182-pound senior again from Asheville, North Carolina, moving the chains for the Mountaineers. Gibson, quite a story. He gets a very uh, unique status. He is uh, in his sixth year of eligibility. He had the major knee injury two years ago. It took him uh, quite a while to recover from that, but the NCAA granted him the extra year. He basically sat out for the last year and a half. He is a six-year, three-time senior. Just doesn't <laughs> he's happen a third very often. senior. <laughs> I don't know if he's got his degree, but he does, I believe, have tenure in the state retirement system now sure. from his from his time here at Appalachian State. First and ten. Rizal 
weaving his way inside the 40 to the 39-yard line. Another nice pickup on first down. They'll give him five, perhaps six yards as Appalachian moves into Troy State territory. Clock moving under 13.43 now. We would certainly put uh, Joey Gibson in the Chris Wenke division in terms of uh, latter years. The, the approaching 30 Florida State quarterback, Gibson may be one of the closer in age in college football to him. Second and three, we'll call it. Straight drop from Reeves. Looking left, he's got a man. That ball is complete once again to Wilcox. Shy of the first down mark. Talked about it in the pregame. One of the keys for Troy State was containing that man, number seven, Daniel Wilcox. I don't know that they have contained him tonight. You look at the receiving numbers, nine catches for 105 yards, 10 catches now actually to 106, but a touchdown. He has not beaten them with the deep ball very often though after the first quarter. They have, everything has been underneath, but he has nickel and dimed them to death. And he's a perfect guy for underneath. He's very steady. He, he did drop one ball near the goal line that he probably should have had, but for the most part, very solid receiver. He's doubled his career highs in both receptions and yardage tonight. Third and a long yard. Big play in this ball game. They'll give it to Rizak. Did he get to the mark? He lost the football. Scooped up. That's Rashawn Reed. He's still going. He's got it back to the 37-yard line of Troy State. First mistake in this ball game. First glaring mistake. A fumble as... Kareem Razak was stretching for that extra yardage, trying to pick up the first down. Ball knocked loose, and Troy State in business once again with an eight-point lead. Let's see what happens as Rock, a, a guy, you, Razak, you wouldn't expect him necessarily to be a power guy, but they run him in the middle quite a bit, and simply as he goes down, the ball comes loose, and there was uh, Rayshon Reed. Uh, might have been uh, forced out of there. Looked like it might have been as he was uh, going down. I'm tempted to say it was Jimmy McLean that stripped it free yeah. only because every time tonight it's happened, I think McLean's been the guy that's had his hand on that. And he so did run right at the middle where McLean uh, is. Going with the percentages, we'll take that chance. Nonetheless, Troy's got it with the eight-point lead. Nutter rolling, looking to throw the pump fake. Now he will unload it. He's got a man out there, but he's overthrown. Tried to hook up with Hayward Skipper, the sophomore from Baxley, Georgia but it was beyond his reach, and that's a smart play on the part of quarterback Brock Nutter. If you're going to make a pass like that, make sure nobody's going to get it but your own man. And Nutter that time, actually, on the rollout, we haven't seen a whole lot of that tonight, but at the last series he was uh, taken down by uh, Stove, uh, KT Stovall, and he's had some problems getting sacked tonight or at least getting dropped for loss, so they're trying to do some things to get him a little bit more protection. More of a power set this time from Troy. LeBaron Black dotting the eye, 5'10 sophomore. He'll take the handoff and doesn't go anywhere. Got to the line of scrimmage, looked like he might scoot through for a couple of yards, and a big paw yanked him back into the huddle. Looked like it may have been Jason Sowell, defensive tackle, that wrapped him up as we'll look at the numbers tonight for Brock Nutter. 14 of 22, 257 yards, a touchdown. No interceptions on the evening. Larry Blakeney told us all week long, number 11 had to have a good night for Troy to win. Thus far, he has had a good evening. Thus far, Troy's on top. The dilemma of your Troy State, though, you're not running the ball well. You get the ball with 13 minutes to go in the fourth quarter. You want to try to eat a good five or six minutes, but they're not able to keep the clock moving or not able to move the ball enough to get first downs on the ground to do that. Put a lot of pressure on your defense when you do that. There's the throw and catch. Carter out of bounds near the first down. I don't know that he got to the mark. Jonathan Carter getting out of bounds around the 47 and I believe they're going to have to carry the change to the other side of the field to check it out well I'm not sure he did it looks like the punt unit is coming out it looks like he's about a yard shy let's see where they they're spotted even he's about a yard and a half shy he made the out I don't know that he would have been able to get it anyway but I guarantee you had he known he had that much yardage still to go for the first he would have tried to put on the brakes and maybe fight for that extra yard instead for now the eighth time tonight it'll be Matt Allen coming on to punt 46 yard average thus far White awaiting the kick beautiful spiraling kick White will let this one bounce at the goal line and it goes into the end zone another towering kick from the foot of Matt Allen, Appalachian State trailing by eight. They'll have it when we return right after this on CSS. 
festive atmosphere here in Boone, North Carolina. Appalachian State, number four in America in 1AA football, hosting number two, Troy State University. Thus far, Troy having the better of it. They lead by eight, but Appalachian State will have the football as play resumes. I'm Chris Stewart along with Pete Yanity, and we have had a great football game tonight. If you're just joining us, the fireworks started early. Troy State scoring three plays into their first possession, but it's really been nip and tuck from that point on. Eight points, really the biggest margin that we've seen for either team thus far tonight. They're coming out in four wides. They've got to reestablish their passing game. That was so successful for them in the first half. That's David Reeves, the quarterback, the son of former NFL quarterback John Reeves, and he hooks up again with Joey Gibson. That young man now four catches on the night, over 30 yards, and another first down for Appalachian State. Gibson this time, one of those uh, four guys spread wide right across the middle, right in front of the coverage. Antonio Thompson could only uh, come up and make the play afterward. He had no chance of getting anywhere near deflecting that ball. Line of scrimmage now, the 32. They'll go with five wideouts. Jose White in the slot to the far side of the field. Low snap, but Reeves a nice catch. Now he'll throw it deep. Looking for a man, can't come up with it. Troy Alby as he was being guarded very closely on that side of the field by number 16, Rayshon Reed. And he recovered a fumble earlier and able to play the tough defense there. But you've seen Appalachian now come out, and, and Alby and Slater, they're two big guns at wide receiver, and they've been relatively quiet on the night. They've still uh, combined for only three catches uh, so far. So those are two guys that uh, have got to be a uh, part of a comeback for Appalachian, and uh, this time they're both split out wide to the same side with Gibson. Second and ten upcoming. Clock you see under 11 minutes to go in the fourth. Appalachian looking for some offense, trailing by a quick hitter, tips. Oof. They will try to hook up with Wilcox across the middle, but several black helmets there, including Byron Knight, a defensive tackle who had actually dropped off the line of scrimmage in coverage. The 5'11", 265-pound sophomore from Abbeville, Alabama, getting the start tonight in place of O.C. Umanura, the all-conference defensive tackle who had the ankle sprain, played a little bit tonight, but as we saw him leave the field late in the third quarter, likely not to see him again tonight. Reeves that time didn't have anyone back uh, to help uh, with protection, and as a result, he was forced to throw it much sooner than he wanted to. Appalachian State just 3 of 14 on third down conversions tonight after converting on 58% of their attempts a week ago in the victory at Wake Forest. Third and 10, heavy pressure, hangs it up, all he can't get there. Reeves had to unload it as Vernon Marble was in his face from the get-go. But once again, Nathan McKinney will have to come on to punt for the Mountaineers. Again, that time, Alby was a guy they were trying to get in the hands of, but against the fast secondary, it is mighty difficult. And they're showing that yeah, we were impressed with Jonathan Carter's speed early. doesn't look like uh, Slade or Alby uh, match uh, that. McKinney, six punts, 46-yard average. Reed will feel this one at his 20. Looking for room at the 25 and trying to just hang on to the football now as he gets near the 29-yard line. Appalachian State coaches wanted a clip or a push in the back on that return, but no calls made as Troy State will have it first and 10 with 10.35 to go. We remind you, after this game, stay tuned for a tape-delayed broadcast of today's East Tennessee State at Colorado State game. That's right here on CSS, your source for sports in the southeast. Several Division 1A opponents again on the schedule for the Southern Conference schools. That's an example of one of them. Uh, Georgia Southern Georgia, Appalachian uh, Wake Forest. And uh, just about every team in the league is playing at least one 1A this year. Citadel played at Clemson last week. First and 10 for State. They'll give it to the first man through, trying to barrel his way for some yardage. Laquadius Justice able to pick up a yard, two, perhaps even three. Who, let's face it, has the best first name on the field. Without question, Laquadius. And there are several contenders. Oh, yeah, you've got some all-name candidates. you got a Rico Washington, yep. a Remy Awalawo, yep. O.C. Umanura also yep. an entrant. Nazir and Kareem, they're just a lot of fun names. But you get a Q into a name like Laquadius. Whenever you can bring a Q into the equation, you know you got something going. That puts him over the top. Second and six, we'll call it. They'll get it to the Monterey Carter, and Westland Hunter leading the charge 
among the Mountaineers. Also, again, in there on the stop, Justin Severns, the linebacking core, really as good as we heard they were coming into this game. Once again, though, if you're Troy State, you took the ball over with about 10 and a half minutes to go. You're going to, if you don't do something on third down, you're going to end up giving the ball back only with about a minute off the clock and still lots of time to go. So this is uh, not the, uh, the formula to try to milk this thing down a little bit. Troy State on third downs, just two of 11 thus far. Brock Nutter and company trying to come up with one to keep this drive alive with the clock moving under 9.15 to go in the fourth. Troy leading by eight, trying to hang on to the football. Nutter, quick drop all day to throw it. Now he'll scramble and buy some time. Lofting it up, he's got Carter. Carter inside Appalachian territory. Probably won't catch him. One man to beat, he does. Touchdown, Troy State. What touch by Nutter. What speed by DeMontre Carter. Just get him, uh, get him heading north to south. And uh, after that, no one on this field tonight can touch him. You talked about the touch. I'm not so certain that it wasn't the patience of Nutter that really made that play. And we'll see it in a moment on the replay as DeMontre Carter has scored now for the third time tonight. All of them of the big play variety. That one covering 67 yards on the throw and catch. Brock Nutter putting another score on the board for Troy State. 30 to 16, biggest lead of the contest and a big extra point upcoming from Lawrence Tyne. Snap and hold are good. The kick is up. It is good as well. A 15-point advantage for the Troy State Trojans with 8.57 to go here in the fourth quarter. Appalachian State with its backs to the wall. Glad you're with us here on CSS. Third touchdown of the night by DeMontre Carter, giving Troy State a 31-16 lead, but Pete Yanity may have been that man that actually made this play. When you're in your third year starting, you've been around the program for four years, like Brock Nutter has, and you got a guy with the speed of DeMontre Carter, even though this is only their second game playing together in game action. The experience on one end, and a guy with plenty of talent, a junior who, of course, played on the 1A level before coming to Troy State. Boy, DeMontre Carter is showing you why he was highly touted coming out of high school by all of the, the biggest of big-time programs, and now why he is exciting here uh, in uh, his first two starts for Troy. That man's not real excited about him. Jerry Moore, the head coach at Appalachian State, has seen the Pensacola native DeMontre Carter score for the third time tonight. Fourth time in a Troy State uniform, covering two weeks, and Trojans with their biggest lead at 31 to 16 as Tynes is set to kick it off. It'll be White once again fielding it at his own two. Trying to change direction, he is corralled. Nice special teams play made by Troy State's Derek Ansley. 6'2", 175, just a freshman from Tallahassee, Alabama. See the scoring drive again capped by a big play. 67-yard reception by DeMontre Carter. Three plays, 70 yards. Second time tonight, Trojans have scored on just three plays. They've got the quick strike ability. They have taken it uh, pretty good ways on the field. And yeah, we, we've now gone uh, a quarter plus uh, almost, uh, what, uh, more than two-thirds of the second half here. And give some credit to Wayne Bolt and his defensive staff for Troy State. They allowed 16 first-half points, none since. They have made some nice adjustments, and really the difference in this game is if you put pressure on Reeves, he's not as effective. You don't shut him down entirely, but when you let him sit back, he can just pick you apart as he did in the first half, throwing for 165 yards. I think he only had five incompletions the entire half, maybe not that many, but his number's not quite as impressive. Still 22, to 22 of 36, 206 yards, a touchdown, no interceptions, a great game by Reeves, but he's going to have to come up with some more fourth quarter magic. If Appalachian State's going to move to 2-0 and on the year. Biggest difference is they haven't allowed Appalachian too many of the underneath passes that were so successful in the first half. Reeves from inside his own end zone. Lost it up, broken up. Nice play again on that corner. Rashawn Reed able to jump in there and knock the ball loose. For a sophomore, he sure does play like a veteran. They expected just this out of him coming into this season. And watch him moves up there, 5'10", up in the air, right in Wilcox's face. Wilcox was going against quite a few linebackers during the first half, but now the secondary guys know about him. It's a nice pass 
probably would have been able to draw pass interference or make the catch had he thrown the ball to the sideline. It was slightly behind Wilcox, but still not a bad effort. That's a long out pass to throw. From his end zone, they try to set up the screen and do so. Rizak lost his footing, or he may have had more. Instead, he's shy of the first down mark, and that's a tough break for the Mountaineers because that will force them to punt. Momentum, time, scoreboard, all in favor now. Troy stayed with 8, 18 and ticking. Time left, fourth quarter. And Appalachian State's offense has now been shut down these past couple of drives. Uh, not even able to, uh, this time not even starting with a good field position we've seen tonight. Jerry Moore has to be wondering, how does the team go from uh, dominating an ACC opponent? Uh, but let's face it, it's a pretty tough customer on the other side of the line of scrimmage tonight. Again, McKinney set to punt. He's had a nice evening. Boy, that's a beautiful kick. That's going to send Rishon Reed all the way back. Nice over-the-shoulder catch inside his 25. Now he looks for room. He's got a little bit. Finally tripped up as he gets to the 40-yard line. But another booming kick from the foot of Nathan McKinney. There is a flag on the play in the area where you normally see a clip or a hold against the receiving team. Tomorrow on CSS, it's our ever-popular Southeastern Outdoors shows beginning at 2.30. The Outdoor Advantage is first, followed by Fishing Southern Style. That's at 3 o'clock at 3.30. It's a re-air of today's Louisiana Tech at Penn State game. Tomorrow evening, Inside Winston Cup Racing is on at 7, followed by Speed Vision's Auto Week and Bike Week. Then at 9 o'clock, we have a re-air of South Carolina State at Savannah State. All of it's on CSS. Your source for sports in the southeast. Hey, you figure the animals live in the wild, so they know all about it. The, the outdoor advantage gives gives you, the, the consumer, the, the advantage. By golly, you need it, don't you? In many respects, you do. 7.40, our time left. Larry Blakeney, I guarantee you, will coach beyond the final horn. He won't rest until his team's probably halfway down the mountain, headed back to Troy, Alabama tonight. But that young man has done exactly what Larry Blakeney asked him to do. Brock Nutter asked him to play a solid game, and thus far he has done just that. He had the one bad throw that almost resulted in an interception that would have gone for a touchdown, but it didn't. Appalachian State not able to take advantage of the miscue, and Troy State with a 15-point lead trying to just run some clock here as they'll give it to another one of those big running backs. That's the tailback, LeBaron Black, 5'10", 205, the sophomore from Springfield, Florida. This would have been a, a super team even without the addition of Demontre Carter, but the dimension that he adds is something. And now another a guy who had uh, some great numbers last year, and then he'll likely get those with the weapons he has, but there's probably a little bit less from a pressure standpoint. It's almost as if he has to manage the offense more as opposed to uh, perform it and, and make some of the plays. He just has to carry things out, get the ball into the hands of that guy, Demontre Carter. And, and again, Carter's uh, talents, uh, you know all about him because he was, as a true freshman, getting lots of carries for Auburn. They'll give it to Black once more. Perhaps a yard, not much more than that. And you know that the people at Troy State are very excited about next year, going to college football's highest level, Division 1A. But for the players and coaches right here, their focus is on the 2000 season and trying to do something you mentioned earlier. That's win a Division 1AA national crown. It would make them one of only two schools to win a national title at three different levels, having done it twice at Division II, once at the NAIA level. They want to go out with championship rings as they close the 1AA chapter on the Troy State football history book. Pitch to Black on third and nine, trying to get to the corner. He does. He's got the first down. Remy Owalowo bringing him down, but not until a Baron Black picks up first down yardage, and that's just a great job by the right side of the Troy State line, creating a seam and allowing LaBaron Black to pick up the first down yardage. He's showing a reason why they were excited about uh, him being a, a big part of their, their ball carrying this year. A tailback with uh, the power uh, side of a uh, running game, much more powerful than DeMondre Carter, obviously not the, uh, the first step of the speed. On that sweep, you had the big guard, Brent Harrison, pulling on the play, helping to run interference. And now with the clock under 5.50 to go on the fourth, Things very much in Troy State's favor. It's a matter now of hanging on to the football. I'll give it to Buton, who tiptoes his way for a gain of a couple. 
but even bigger now to Troy State is not necessarily the yardage, but the time ticking away on the scoreboard clock here at Kid Brewer Stadium. That was a huge first down for Troy, which had not been able to, to get a first down in his previous couple of series to hang on to the ball and run that clock, but now they've got a chance to take a couple of minutes off here and just about put this away. You still are only two scores down if you're Appalachian. If you can get the ball back and push it in, you probably go for one to at least uh, still remain within tie range if you could score again and then try for two. But that is not a uh, an easy proposition at this stage. Tried to bounce to the outside that time. Utah, but still no room. Check that. It was black on the carry. May have gotten a couple, but another third down situation. And should Troy State pick up the first down, you would think that could just about do it for the Trojans. Although you never get ball, give up on a team as good as Appalachian, but given the fact they need two scores, it would put the clock under four minutes. It would be very, very difficult for the Mountaineers. They still have all of their timeouts, as does uh, Troy. Each of uh, three timeouts remaining. Third and nine will call it. Movement. Play will stand. They'll throw it. And it's incomplete. They were looking on that side for Jonathan Carter. And that is asking where was the pass interference play? <laughs> Harry Blakeney could not believe that interference wasn't called. But I really was surprised that that play ever got started. It looked like half the players thought that that it would be whistled dead before it got underway. We'll let you play the role of official here. Well, in a defensive uh, situation, pretty much a free play. And then at that point, maybe they realized, uh, <laughs> maybe the official over there realized it was going to be on the defense anyway, so why bother? But uh, probably not. He just, in that case, maybe an uncatchable ball. Or perhaps a reputation no call on an all-conference player such yep. as Corey Hall. Officials don't do that, do they? Oh, you'll have to ask them. Third down and a long three. Troy, 15-point advantage, fumble on the play. Loose ball, who's got it? Appalachian State, I believe, has the football. Well, Tough pitch that Black couldn't come up with, and Appalachian State has recovered. Westland Hunter getting on the football, and new life for the Mountaineers. This one's not over with yet. Talk about your breaks. Troy got one earlier when Rizak fumbled. Now this time, Wesley Hunter right plays at the right time as Nutter throwing just a little bit behind Black, and it's huge, especially the fact that Appalachian takes over the Troy 41. And as you mentioned earlier, all three timeouts remaining. And less than half the field needed to cover in order to pick up points. Reeves, check that. It is not Reeves in the game. Pass deflected as the quarterback in the contest once more is the backup, Joe Burchett. Burchett, excuse me, 6'4", 205, the sophomore, came in earlier for one play and ran the quarterback sneak. David Reeves, we told you earlier, took a big, big blow. And I don't know that he ever got the cobwebs cleared after a big hit that he took. A clean hit leveled by a Troy State defender. And uh, with Bursha, you don't uh, lose any arm uh, strength. Reeves is a great arm, but this guy, Jerry Moore, actually has said with Daniel Jeremiah down, he is excited to see Bursha get some snaps, see what he has, because this guy is the uh, QB of the future for the program. Across the middle, there's a hookup. Joey Gibson, same man that caught several passes from David Reeves earlier tonight, able to move the chains. That will stop the clock with 3.51 to go in the fourth quarter. Look at it again. That time crosser pattern. A gunslinger Burchette throws it right in there. Gibson, good hands. Got him first down yarders so the clock stopped momentarily. From the gun, Burchette throwing it. Bobbled around and almost intercepted. Jose White almost kept it in the air long enough for a Troy State player to make the interception. But Nazir Yamini couldn't come up with it. He was more concerned with making the hit than picking up the football. Also over there, Nick Colbert, strong side linebacker. Burchette appearing in six games for the Mountaineers a season ago. Five of 11, 47 yards, a pair of touchdowns. Had TD throws against Furman in Chattanooga. A redshirt year was 1998 for Burchette. Again, 6'4", 220 out of West Forsyth High School in Clemens, North Carolina. 
Second down, throws it behind the receiver, but he caught it. Joey Gibson, how did he come up with that football? He's got it at the five-yard line. Can't wait to see that one again just to figure out how in the world he reeled it in. He used his hip <laughs> right behind him. Oh, what that. a catch. Pulled it right out of the air. Fingertip. Derek Jackson thought he had an interception, but Gibson just took it away on what might be the catch of the night. From the gun, quarterback draw, Burchette running over a man and getting into the end zone, touchdown. He just planted Travis Bozeman, the free safety, at the goal line. And what a play by the quarterback and a great call by Rob Best, the offensive coordinator in his 12th year here at Appalachian State. Just like that, the Mountaineers back in it. They will kick the extra point here. 6'4", 235. That's uh, using the full size. Uh, many had uh, cleared out. They may just miss some late fireworks. Oh, he oh, missed goodness. the kick. Oh, my. He hooked it left. And that means we have a nine-point differential, and Appalachian would have to score twice now. Huge play. We'll look at the touchdown again. First extra point miss from right as we'll look at the quarterback draw. Troy State's obviously uh, flooding the end zone, thinking there's going to be some kind of dump off. So Burchett goes right up the middle. He simply had one man to uh, contend with uh, an isolation situation. And it was uh, too late by the time the big guy got rumbling for uh, Travis Bozeman to do anything about it. But what a roller coaster night for Mark Wright. Really kind of his debut because last week he had actually missed an extra point last week, but uh, didn't get a field goal attempt. Had a great first half. Established a school record with the longest field goal in their history at 57 yards, but then he just misses the extra your point having already missed a field goal so the uh, certainly slightly tarnished is that five play 41 yard scoring drive it happened as quickly as they needed it to 39 seconds got them back in the game but it does not now have them back within one score because of the mixed extra point attempt still got all three timeouts remaining and it has been a tale of two halves for mark wright 40 yard 27 in school record 57 yard field goals for him in that first half of play he missed just missed a 51 yarder here in the second half but missed a huge extra point there and again couldn't tell if it may have been a bad snap or hold but somewhere there was a mix up on the kicking unit it misses wide and troy state with a huge break they lead by nine so now if you're appalachian state you need two scores. I've got to think you go for the onside kick yeah. here, and it looks like they will. The good hands team is out there for Troy. And now you also wonder, in this situation, is, uh, is Reeves done for the night? Is this Burchette's game to, uh, to bring him all the way back? You know, I I've got to think that it was an injury that kept Reeves out to begin with. You certainly can't fault his play. You've sure. got to think that it was the injury. And on to handle the onside kick, Robert Pettis. Six feet, 200 pound sophomore from Davidson, North Carolina. They take that big hop on the artificial service. It went over the front line into the hands of Rayshawn Reed, who does a nice job of just catching it and falling down immediately. So Troy, with a huge break, the extra point attempt missed, and that changes the complexion of things entirely. Now you are just trying to run some clock, and you don't feel bad if you have to punt it away after four downs or after three downs. I'd be willing to bet we see no attempt at running the option or pitching <laughs> the football by Brock Nutter. Our Monday lineup begins at 1 o'clock Eastern with the re-air of Thursday's Chattanooga at UAB game. The evening lineup kicking off with the Bobby Bowden Show at 6.30 at 8. It's a re-air of today's Vanderbilt-Alabama game as once again, Demontre Carter, big running room inside the 20 and down to the 19-yard line. It's the second time Demontre has interrupted me in the middle of a promo. <laughs> I'm going to get this out. Also on Monday, Tennessee Football Classic Show, Vintage Orange at 11 o'clock. That's CSS. It's your source for sports in the southeast. Now, Demontre, run it again, and we'll talk about it. Just a pretty big hole there opened up by the Troy offensive line. Some super blocking right there at point of attack. Nothing fancy, just uh, knocking some guys down at that time. Carter, give him a hole, and he's shown you. He's got as uh, quick a first step as App Appalachian will probably see all season long. 34 yards on the play, and again, we talked about it. A guy that was talented enough for the SEC, but just not really big enough 
to play in the SEC week in and week out. And this is a great fit for him, this Troy State offense. Had a very good program in 1AA football. Laquadius Justice scampering to the 15-yard line. Appalachian still is showing three timeouts, and now I believe they'll go ahead and burn one. Again, a reminder, after this game, stay tuned for a tape-delayed broadcast of today's East Tennessee State at Colorado State. It's right here on CSS, your source for sports in the southeast. So pleased that this game has, has lived up to what we thought it would be. We talked about it all week long. You had a chance to visit with Jerry Moore and Larry Blatney. I did as well. And with 2.25 to go, this game has been just what we hoped it would be, matching number two versus number four, a game that was really, in the minds of a lot of people, supposed to take place in the second round of the playoffs last year, but Florida A&M obviously didn't get the memo. They knocked off Appalachian, knocked off Troy in the second round, and now they have to meet in the second week of the regular season. But two very good football teams. One thing is for certain, even if his team is one and one after tonight, Jerry Moore knows a lot about his football team as they've played two very solid opponents in Wake Forest and in Troy State the first two weeks. They obviously would have liked to have gone into the their open day at a 2-0, oh, but 1-1 uh, one one isn't too bad. Uh, and these teams could have that meeting in the postseason once again this year. Uh, Georgia Southern obviously is someone else to uh, consider, and they're a uh, good handful that are pretty good bet uh, that are in the top 10 right now that will make a run toward the playoff. UMass, uh, Furman out of this league, and some others. But uh, this is a uh, pretty elite matchup here, and I think we've seen some, uh, some huge individual performances. And Demontre Carter has, uh, I think, safe to say, stolen the show, especially in the second half. LeBaron Black getting the carry. And not able to pick up much running room, but that's not what's most important now to Troy. They just want to hang on to the football, force Appalachian to use their timeouts, and then try and run out the remaining two minutes, 12 seconds in this football game. And... Hang on to that nine-point lead, currently 31-22. to 22. Well, now you wonder with third down and uh, six, maybe seven coming up as Appalachian uses that second time out. Actually probably burned a few seconds before they called it. You wonder if fourth down comes up, if they even think about a field goal. You're right. They're up by two scores right now. And Appalachian's going to likely come out of uh, this series with no timeouts either way. Got a lot of action upcoming here on CSS and also obviously a full slate still to go for Troy. As you see the schedule still to take place. Alabama State always a tough rivalry game from not too far away in Montgomery. That one at South Florida should be a great matchup mm -hmm. for Troy State. The Bulls a very good program in their first year as a 1A independent. Northwestern State starts Southland Football League play for the Trojans before facing Southwest Texas, Sam Houston, Nichols, Stephen F. McNeese, and Jacksonville State. The road not very easy either for Appalachian. They get a much needed week off after tonight. Then they'll face the Citadel right here at Kid Brewer Stadium before traveling to East Tennessee State. Furman, Georgia Southern, Wofford, a much improved Chattanooga team. Saw them Thursday night against UAB. And Donnie Kirkpatrick's got a very solid team with the Mox, VMI, Western Carolina, Liberty, all still to face the Mountaineers of Appalachian State. But Larry Blakeney has to be very, very pleased. His team has come into one of the toughest places in America to win and are two minutes away from doing just that. As the third down pickup goes for a yard, maybe two, as Justice hangs onto the football for Troy State. And now Appalachian let several seconds roll off before finally using their final timeout. They let 10 seconds tick off the clock before they called it. Before that last play, though, they'd actually added some time, and maybe they'll, they'll do the same again this time. Because I saw a motion for a timeout right there as the, uh, the play was whistled dead. Appalachian, uh, after the Citadel, then they're looking at sandwiching two tough uh, road trips. East Tennessee State, just about an hour west of here, and always a tough game to play when you have to go into that mini-dome, right. which is, uh, for all intents and purposes, like a giant hangar, and uh, Todd Wells, a fine quarterback, T. Sims, wonderful running back for East Tennessee, and uh, last year, East Tennessee gave Appalachian all kinds of problems. 
I, I drove past that uh -huh. on my way here yep. and wondered, as it's too big for basketball, it looks like but they play football, basketball they, in there. But they play they, basketball and football. I thought there. that was where they uh, yep. they have the the right. indoor football. Yep. And they do, and uh, so nice you've got to facility. Got to go there. It's always tough. Furman, of course, one of the league contenders, comes here, and then to Georgia Southern. So those uh, three games: September 30th, October 7th, October 14th. Tough uh, three-game stretch. Well, what do you know? They are going to try for three. They call on Lawrence Tynes, the veteran. 36-yard field goal earlier. This one would be a 30-yard attempt. Snap and hold are good. The kick is up. The kick is true. Troy State stretching its lead now to 12 points. 34 to 22 as Tynes took a tumble after delivering the kick. And the Trojans appear to be well on their way to a victory over Appalachia. We'll look at it again, see if he got a little shot at the end of that kick. He uh, fires the ball away, and then he looks like he's fired out of a cannon right there. Well, was so, inadvertent. Yes, like the, uh, it looked, the like, was him, yeah. looked like there was some contact and players just fell into sure. him, but kickers are not accustomed to that. That's a rude awakening. Tide says, I just made a 30-yarder. Why am I being hit? But <laughs> goes to the turf. It won't hurt too bad as he and his teammates head back to Troy, and it will be a very happy drive back, albeit a lengthy one to Troy, Alabama, and Pike County. If you're Appalachian, though, on the flip side, you're still down by just two scores, two exactly. touchdowns. Doesn't change much. Doesn't change a whole lot. And that Carter run, he re he was about a step away from busting it for yet another touchdown. And that would have certainly iced this game. Now, Appalachian is uh, out of timeouts so about the score quickly, get an onside kick. What it does change, though, you, you need the two touchdowns now As opposed to rather touchdown than a touchdown field goal. field goal. Which and they should have been control. within one possession of the extra point being good after the, uh, the last Appalachian touchdown. Exactly right. Things have gotten a little chaotic the final five minutes or so, but other than that, it has been a very well-played football game. Very few mistakes on either side. I think we're even now in the turnover department, but other than a couple of miscues, everything else has been very well played here tonight in Boone, North Carolina. Tides kicking this one into the end zone as White watches it sail over his head. First and 10 from the 20, and again, we will likely see Burchette come out as the quarterback. Start of the year, number three on the depth chart. But due to the injury to Jeremiah, he is now number two. As you see the scoring drive again for Troy, 40 yards, five plays, 30-yard kick, but the big play set up a 30-plus yard carry again by DeMontre Carter. Be freewheeling it now, Will Burchette. He's going to have to tuck it and run, though, and does a nice job of picking up good yardage across the 30. That will stop the clock. You don't want a guy to do that if he's only going to pick up six, seven yards, but he does pick up 11, perhaps 12. It stops the clock momentarily. As you see a player for Troy State trying to get to the sidelines. I believe the cramps have worked into the legs of Tim Betts. I don't think that's a victory dance. I think he's trying to keep both legs from curling up over his shoulders right now with those muscle cramps. Long night for Betts. Burchette rocked as he gets to the 36-yard line, and they're going to give him that all he wants. Yeah. Troy State defensively will let that young man run until his tongue hangs out. They just want to make sure the deep ball is not allowed here in the final moments. You have to like it, though, if you're Appalachian, a guy who's going to be around here, and he'll take over the starting range next year, getting some quality time. Those touchdowns he threw against Furman, that came in a blowout loss, and against Chattanooga came in a blowout win. But this is a situation where they have a legitimate chance to possibly come back, and uh, he's, he's in there uh, under the gun. Pass falling incomplete, intended for Rashad Slate. Good to see number 72 out there as well for Troy State. O.C. Umanura came into this game, Gimpy, with a bad ankle. Has seen limited time, had to leave the game in the second half again because of what appeared to be an ankle injury, but a tough, tough player. It's not easy to play on bad wheels regardless when you're that size, but especially on artificial turf. This surface, Kid Brewer Stadium, put in in 1970. First school in North Carolina to go to the artificial surface. As Burchette picks up another first down, stopping the clock again near the one-minute mark, 106 to be exact. 
And obviously the crowd has thinned considerably with a home team trailing by a dozen with just over a minute to play. But we had a tremendous crowd here tonight. Gorgeous setting for college football as Troy State will attend to their injured player. That is Shelton Felton, 6'2", 250 sophomore. He gets into the all-name team because of the rhyme factor, yeah, the rhyme obviously. Factor, definitely. But this is a gorgeous setting. Our thanks to people at Appalachian State for their hospitality and also to Troy State University for the assistance as we've prepared for this broadcast. And we thank them most importantly for giving us a great ball game. And he is up and uh, walking off on his own strength, but it looks like his right right hand or wrist is uh, favoring that at this point. And another player down across the way as well. I believe that is an injured that looks like a Troy State, State player, player as well. They're dropping like flies, and it may just be cramps again. Is that bets again? I believe it is. I think they're going to give him all the fluids he wants on the bus and maybe even an IV from the training staff as well. As Carter earlier, uh, Demontre Carter, after that long touchdown yeah. run cramped up off the, off the swing pass. It's a cool evening, but it's still, this time of year, still warm, and that play will come back. We had a flag before the snap of the football. It's been, and quite humid too uh, up here right. in uh, the mountains and there was a little bit of a threat of rain beforehand but enough about the weather back to the sports uh, but this uh, situation now virtually they're just not going to let them throw along gives you an idea about the quickness and the athletic talent in the secondary for Troy when we talked about it earlier in the game a guy who led the league the Southland football league in interceptions last year Chris Archie couldn't earn a starting job this year it's six picks a year ago and yet he's beaten out for the uh, for that they've also are going to add some time to the clock which will put it back up over a minute i believe we're going to put it at 106 and a half have indeed as that play was whistled dead before it started a false start called on appalachian that is their sixth penalty tonight 29 yards appalachian state looking to throw he had his man open but just threw it beyond the outstretched arms of kareem razak a little bit too much mustard on the football from joe burchette well, that one may have gone the distance. He had Razak cross the middle. Couldn't catch up to it. Offensive story on this night, of course, for Troy State, a combined 255 yards of offense rushing and receiving for Demontre Carter. Big story of the second half, the shutting down of the Appalachian passing game and for the entire game, shutting down their top two wide receivers, Slade and Albert. Bichette stumbling, but Come on, Come on. he's got a man, that is Albee, he's inside the 10, pushed out of bounds at the 9-yard line. Great recovery first off by Joe Bichette, he slipped on the turf but kept his footing, out of also showed the, the presence to hook up with Troy Albee deep downfield at the 9-yard line, and Appalachian trying to tack on a score here with 46 seconds to go, 51 yards on the throw and catch. Aldi re-emerges as his second catch on the night, but he's a, a speed guy, and that time he uh, beat the coverage. Beautiful pass by Burchette. Boy, you've got to be impressed. Uh, you know, Jeremiah can earn you your starting job going to Wake Forest. you got Reeves coming off the bench, and then this guy in the wings. What, uh, what depth they've got there for Appalachia. No timeouts left, but first and goal from the nine. They've still got time. Burchette throws, complete touchdown. Hooks up again with Joey Gibson. With 42 seconds to go, you still got time if you're Appalachian. They're going to call the training staff from Troy State on again. Another player cramping up, but that really works to Appalachian's favor. They can take their time and talk things over as we'll look at the touchdown pass again. Nine yards from Burchette to Gibson. Gibson does a nice job catching the ball in traffic or in tight coverage, and it didn't get much, uh, can't get much tighter than what he faced uh, just then. Uh, Derek Jackson on the coverage, and he, in fact, is the one who's gone down cramping up, but uh, Gibson able to concentrate while the arm was uh, coming across to Jackson and reel that one in, so we have ourselves a ball game, 42 seconds to go, and, and of course, the, uh, the big debate, you're back within a touchdown and two-point conversion. I would think you'd kick the extra point here, which is, looks like what they're going to do, or at least try to. You've got to have a touchdown regardless. You may as well uh, share the little chart that was originally designed by Sid Gilman <laughs> on the one to go for two, one to go for one. This, this combination probably shows you go for one. Got to tip your hat to Appalachian. They could have easily called it a night. 
They have battled back. The extra point attempt upcoming for Mark Wright. He missed it again. Oh, my goodness. He missed it again. Second missed extra point tonight for Mark Wright. His third of the season. As great a first half as he had, it has been just as disastrous here in the second. Perfect in the first half, including a school record 57-yarder, but a miss from 51 yards. Can't really fault him there. Good foot on the ball, just happened to miss it left. But two missed extra points that are huge in this football game. But Appalachian still with 42 seconds left, a chance to try for the onside kick, and still a chance to win this football game. Each uh, one from the 51 yard, he misses the two extra points. He has pulled to the left. Uh, I don't believe it's uh, so much a snap and a placement as much as probably just him pulling the ball. Because the distance, the trajectory of the balls looks pretty good. Right. And again, we noted uh, early on in the telecast that uh, the inexperience of the kicking game now again, but then how do you argue that when a guy nails one 57 yards to give his team a lead at the half? Well, Troy needs to field this kick and then Brock Nutter can go to a knee once, maybe twice at the most to end this football game. But they have to field this one first. Appalachian, if they recover, still hope. They trail 34-28, 42 seconds to play. Again, it will be Robert Pettis to handle the onside kick. They will kick it to the top part of your screen. See if Appalachian can get that favorable hop on the onside kick attempt. Here's your ball game. High hopper, but a beautiful catch made on that one hop. And what a pop by Deshaun Martin. Daniel O'Brien <laughs> went up, made the catch, and then was introduced. Oh, my goodness. Martin showed us in the first half he can go downfield and grab the ball. This time he shows he can grab it and take it. He said, I can't get the football, but that doesn't mean I can't take your head off your shoulders. Clean hit, but a solid pop. Headgear right to the chest, but O'Brien did his job. He had a catch earlier in the ball game. This time, able to go up and make his most important catch of the night in bringing down the onside kick. Actually, two catches, 46 yards, but that was the biggest, and that will do it. Brock Nutter to an E. Clock will start. No timeouts left for Appalachian. We'll see. They will likely have to snap it one more time, but that will do it. Maybe not. Actually, it is. It's right about a half second off, so. What a big win for Larry Blakeney and the uh, crew to come up to Boone, North Carolina and pull it out when it looked like it might be slipping away going into the halftime locker room. The 57-yard field goal by Wright gave the momentum to Appalachian State, but Troy regained the momentum. They came to the mountains of Boone, North Carolina and have taken back to Alabama a 34 28 victory over the Mountaineers of Appalachian State. Number two holds on to knock off number four. It was as good as advertised. And glad we got to see the coming out party for Demontre Carter. As you mentioned earlier, unofficially, I guess, our star of the game. Well, let's go ahead and make it official. He is our star of the game. Three touchdowns. 255 yards of total offense. And that's not, a, that, that's just counting from the line of scrimmage. That's right. Not even counting the return yardage. And even more importantly, it's the plays that he made, eluding a couple of tacklers on a swing pass to go for a long touchdown that put Troy comfortably ahead in the third quarter. And then making a Willie Mays-like catch on the lob ball on what might have been a, uh, a tackle for loss. Uh, Brock Nutter laid it right there for him. Carter pulled it in, took off, and went for another score. Just some big-time plays by a, a big-time guy, Demontre Carter, and a reason why Troy State thinks on their way out of 1AA, they've got a legitimate shot at winning a national title. Troy State got the solid effort they wanted from their quarterback, Brock Nutter, 16 of 26, 332 yards and two touchdowns. I'd say that's more than a solid effort tonight. 
It's been our pleasure to bring you tonight's matchup from Boone, North Carolina. Your final score once again, Troy State knocking off Appalachian State by a score of 34 to 28. Stay tuned as we travel from the Appalachians to the Rockies, where East Tennessee State will take on Colorado State. For Pete Yannity and all of us here at CSS, this is Chris Stewart. Thank you for watching us right here on CSS, your source for sports in the Southeast.